want you to be loud. I want you to be proud. It's time to be brave. Are you ready? vision, determination, inspired a generation. It gave a new dream for the youth of his homeland. It created a groundbreaking revolution in the sports. When a vision is strongest, nothing can stop its far-reaching impact. And the vision was three powerful letters. KHK And today his vision is far reaching the valor and pride of his homeland is far reaching Today his vision is defining the future of a new generation a generation of heroes and of gladiators Today is the day of hope for the hopeless. The day KHK will inspire the souls to fight back, irrespective of what they are and who they are. This is character has come to you live from Vince Belarus. This will be a new era of true heroes and gladiators. Mike when Jack he stood two, in the front one two, and left, they called him the Prince of Gladiators and Heroes. This is Phil Combo coming live from Minsk, Belarus with Kirit Janess, about to get things kicking off for a night of incredible fights. Hello and welcome to Kirit Janess, the Prince of Gladiators. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you so much for
In 2016, a vision revolutionized mixed martial arts in the Middle East. It all started with the evolution of MMA in a small island in the Middle East. The magnificent kingdom of Bahrain, a land of ancient glory and bravery, thriving under great leaders and visionaries. The country is now home to the largest MMA promotion in the region, Brave Combat Federation. And the kingdom became the first ever country outside of the United States that featured the IMF World Championships. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his true warrior spirit envisioned the growth of MMA in the region. He believed in the glory of the sport of mixed martial arts and facilitated the best MMA facility in the land. Along with brave President The Hawk, Muhammad Shaheed, in the shortest span of time, we grew stronger. We grew bigger. This is the story of the fastest growing MMA promotion in the world. This is the story of Brave Combat Federation. Исполняется государственный гимн Республики Беларусь.
исполняется государственный гимн Бахрейна. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, Assalamu Alaikum to the incredible people of Mix Belarus. Let's make some noise! We are live from the Falcon Club in beautiful Mix Belarus, where the fastest growing MMA organization in the world returns to action for a legendary night at Brave CF 51. The future is here with an explosive fight card for the world to see. Tonight, we make history. Brave Combat Federation 51, the future is here, is live right now. First off, I'd like to send our best regards to His Royal Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa the vision, the support, and we are all grateful for the incredible things you've done, changing the landscape of mixed martial arts worldwide. His Highness, you're a true life changer and dream maker, and we're blessed and honored to carry out your vision. Also, I'd like to thank Brave Combat Federation leader, the Hawk, Muhammad Shaheed, the hardest working CEO in the business today, and the man that carries out Sheikh Khalid's vision. I'd like to send a huge thank you to Rook Sport Management for their amazing partnership in making Brave CF51, the future is here, a tremendous success for mixed martial arts in Belarus, Europe, and beyond. Brave Nation, before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. For all those watching in beautiful Mix Belarus and the millions watching around the world, Brave Nation, are you ready for war? Let's move on with our historic show as we have our first fight on tap. All right, here we go, Brave Nation. This first bout of our historic event here is three five-minute rounds in a catchweight war of 62.5 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 62.45 kilograms. Representing Yam Club and fighting out of Tajikistan, welcome, Baktovar, Dominator, Yanofov. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands, one up, 70 centimeters tall, and weighs, already, 62.5 kilograms. Representing 
So call Jim and fighting out of men's Belarus. Give it up for Artem Hunter Lodyarov. Your referee is Andre Pivovaro. Phil Dominator clearly is feeling the tension more than his opponent. His opponent isn't feeling any tension whatsoever, but that does go away the moment each of them touches each other. You can see from the graphic there, slight height advantage to back to far. Both these men weighed in at the limit. And Artem is a fired up young man. First fight of the night. Here we go. Touch your gloves. Both these men lighting a few. Big overhand straight away from Artem. That's why they call him Hunter. Forces back to VAR into that panic shot. Oh, and then a big hooks being thrown by these guys. Another panic shot by back to VAR. This is a frenetic pace. Needs to be careful not to throw the knee here as he is a downed opponent. Big shot to the top of the dome from back to VAR. And an elbow, very sophisticated for a fighter this early in his career, Phil. And you can see that freestyle wrestling base now. Just trying to immobilize the hips of his opponent. Keep them pinned down. Potential for a head arm triangle here. Hunter trying to scramble to his feet, but when one of the most dangerous points is right here in the sport because you can get your back taken, as you're about to see. When you come off the floor against that cage, this is exactly what can happen. Oh, it's a huge squeeze. We could be looking at the we could be looking at the beginning of the end. The mouthpiece is out. That looks tight. Artem desperately trying to fight it off, but this is a gargantuan squeeze by Baktovar. Especially at this stage of the fight where he does have that power in his arms. Both these fighters are dry. Needs to be careful not to burn the arms out here because it is so early. Decky Larkin, Decky's watching very carefully to make sure the fighter doesn't go out. Oh, this looks so tight. You have to appreciate the toughness of Phil, that, ha that half guard was now passed. It's getting closer. He's trying everything he can to create a little bit of space for himself. Not so much the answering the phone defenses, just trying to wedge that elbow between himself to alleviate some of that pressure on the carotid artery. But this looks super tight. And is Baktovar in danger of potentially burning out his arms, Kerik? Not as much as his opponent is in danger of going to sleep, Phil. You can see the grimace on the face of Artem Lukyanov slowly. The face was turning purple there. It looks like Baktovar has alleviated some of that pressure a little bit. He's gone for palm to palm grip, I think it is. Lukinov has to stay off of having both of his shoulder blades flat against the mat, and he's out! Wow! What heart! That is incredible toughness there from Artem Lukinov. But he's still in a precarious position here. Baktovar in that anchor position that's so popular in mixed martial arts right now. Just needs to roll the wrists up and unload some heavy ground on point. Does have two wins by way of TKO. Is known for that heavy ground on point. Hunter's trying to control his opponent's posture. If he can keep that head well in front of the knees, there isn't the leverage oh, to strike, switch. and you can get a sweep. That's a huge reversal, but back the bar like a dog with a bone right back on his man. And now he's going for, oh, that's huge ground and point. These are big shots, Phil. There's potential here to pass the legs, but this is huge ground and point. And now he's starting to smash in those elbows in the full, is it the full mount position? No, still the half guard. Oh, beautiful work to pin the arm down. Potential here for a little bit of a quasi crucifix. Guard is fully passed. There's the full crucifix. And right here, it's just about landing continuously because Artem cannot intelligently defend himself right now. Hunter needs to get on his side and remove one of those arms. Momentarily, it looked like Baktavar was working for that key lock. That one was double trouble. Shot to the head and a second shot as the head bounced off the canvas. And for Artem on the bottom, he's expelling so much energy to try and get back to VAR off him. Whereas back to VAR is just intelligently distributing his weight and landing huge shots. A little bit of blood on the nose there of Artem. Again, momentarily looked like he was working for that key lock, but Artem is eating huge shots here. 
elbow got right through. Oh, Hugh sweeps the leg and comes over with another huge shot. Back to VAR is absolutely relentless. Again, passes through. Phil, we know Artem has a terrific guard, but it is compromised at this point, I believe, due to all the heavy shots that have landed today. He is eating some absolutely huge shots, as you say, Kirik. But what does he need to do to get to the end of the round? He got there briefly earlier. He needs to get his opponent to open guard, put the feet in the hips, shoot the opponent back, and pop back up to standing. He's not going to win this fight on the ground by the looks of it. You have to give one incredible respect to the toughness of Artem, but the pace set by Baktovar was incredible. The frequency of shots he was landing. I thought he may have been in trouble of burning his arms out with that head-on triangle, but then he was throwing the hands relentlessly. Phil, let's, look at the, let's take a little look at this Green Hill replay. Rules beautifully into the head-on triangle, and I'm sure when he got the leg out and transitioned to the side, I'm sure he thought he had it, but then Artem showing just how tough he is. If you're in the corner of Artem right now, what are you saying to him? It, it, you try and get his heart back. You try and remind him, remind him he was doing great from standing. You try and remind him who he is, a warrior, and you try to get him to start moving in a circle, sink his hips just a little bit, and don't get taken down. But for the very picture of calm inside the cage there, all to do here for our champ. Potentially, could you be looking at Tanya round after that first one, Kirk? Phil, I believe that was the very definition of a 10 8 round. Glove touch. Artem cannot leave himself in a position where he is prone to the takedown here. He needs to get on the bike, moving and land his shots. Again, opening up with huge, huge hooks, but then right down to the ground. That's a problem moving forward with those strikes, Phil. If it doesn't work, if you don't take your opponent out, the minute you do it, you are subject to being taken down like that. Again, in the half guard position is back to VAR. Once again, Hunter trying to stand up. But as I said earlier, this is the most dangerous, one of the most dangerous points in mixed martial arts because your back can so readily be taken as we're seeing right here in front of us. Back to VAR turns into back take VAR. I will not apologize for that bit of wordplay. Oh, beautiful work from Artem to turn in. Needs to be wary of the submission. Potential here for a triangle locked up by back to VAR. Hunter now has to posture. He's got to get his head behind his knees. If that head stays in front of the knees, it is extremely difficult to get out. And he's eating huge shots here. No danger on the choke yet, but there will be. We may see Bakhtavar perhaps roll back a little bit and try and put pressure. Bakhtavar, I believe it's going to go for a seated triangle. And now back in the half guard is Bakhtavar. May transition, just get that knee on belly, try and land those huge shots. and. It's the transitionary wrestling, switching from the, the mount to the side. Very it's, smart work from Baxter It's absolutely fantastic. You don't ordinarily see that in a fighter with this short a record. He's also transitioning beautifully between strikes and threatening submissions, and then right back seamlessly to the striking. There's the elbow. Beautiful work with the elbow. Just framed off the face of Artem and crashed that elbow in. Oh, huge ground and punch. It's Ref short time now. Referee looked like he was going to jump in at that stage. Baktavar just swings the legs to the side, crushes him with another shot. Again, just seamlessly into the mount position, postures up, and here comes the ground and pound. And at 22 years old, you have to appreciate the, the calmness with which Bagdavar is going about his work. Again, may take the back here, flattening out his opponent, trying to get that arm underneath for the choke. Oh, this could be it. That looks tight. One hook's escaped. Has that reverse half guard from the back. Hunter may be able to wall walk his way out of there. Switches palm to palm. Second hook is in. A little bit of hand fighting going on. Just under half the round left for Bakhtavar to get the work done here. But again, transitioning from the back tick to the mount, huge strikes. Artem valiantly trying to fight through it. 
potential here for an armbar as well with these flailing limbs. Mouthpiece is out. We may be very short time now, Phil. Very short time, ah, and that's, that's it! That's all over! Dickie Larkin stops the fight! Dickie Larkin's changed a little bit since last time I saw him in the cage there, but back to Larkin. This off with a huge win. That is an incredibly dominant performance. Moves the professional record to 5-0 and oh with four wins total by way of finish. That was as dominant as a performance as we have seen in the Brave League in a long time here. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, that is why they call him the Dominator. Just the methodical way in which he went about getting that win was beautiful to watch. Absolutely methodical and absolutely relentless. Gets the takedown, establishes the dominant position. I love the fact he didn't rush anything. When something wasn't working for him, he switched to something else, changed the position, switched from the submissions to the striking. The absolute huge shots. Just see the relentless way in which back to bar went about his work, tried for the rear naked choke, but again, realized it wasn't necessarily working for him, switched to a dominant position, and that is huge ground of mind. Forcing the referee to stop the fight. Big respect to Artem Bukinov. There was any number of points there. He could have gotten himself out of there. Nobody would have blamed him. He hung tough. Decky Larkin eventually stopped the fight. Back to bar is his first win on a global stage. And he's going to be absolutely elated there. Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what a way to start our historic night. This first bout comes to an end at three minutes and eight seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Baktavar Dominator Yanosov! Carlos Kramer needs to get a fish on. Both these young men at 21 and 22 respectively will have great careers, but to meet in a battle like that is an illustration of just why mixed martial arts is the best sport in the world. See a little bit more of the action there, and then again was the attempt at the head on triangle, which I genuinely thought, I thought that was going to be the end of the fight turn. Absolutely terrific illustration of the transitions here. A submission is used to set up the sweep. The sweep is used to further control. And then that further control is used for what you're seeing right here. Big, booming shots to the head. These shots like that always look so much better in slow motion. And great pieces and off the wrestling from back to bar. He's just constantly didn't give Artem any time to reset, recalibrate. He was just constantly on him like white on rice. It was incredible to watch. This is the fight that's setting the tone for the rest of the night. We are in for an absolute treat, my friend. Until we are indeed, we have only just begun. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Vadim Rolich is ready to make a splash in the light heavyweight division. As he takes on Kurbancho Yamolov a judo specialist with several amateur MMA titles. Coming up next, Vadim Rolich faces off against Kurbancho Yamolov. All right, Brave Nation. Let's welcome our next two warriors into the Brave CF 51 RSM cage. 
Here we go, Brave Nation. This bout is three five-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and one loss. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 92.65 kilograms. Representing Fight Club Rubies E Catering Russia and fighting out of Tajikistan. Please welcome Karbon Show Yamalov. And this opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and one loss. He stands 187 centimeters tall and weighs already 92.35 kilograms. Representing Belarus on the team and fighting out of Minsk, Belarus. Give it up for the team. Ralich. Our referee in charge of the action is Andre Pivovarov. Phil, mixed martial arts was born from an attempt to find out what style is best. Now we've got judo versus sanda. Vadim Rolic, a little bit older, a little bit taller. Both of these men came under the 93 kilo limit. And it's always fun to see the big guys throwing down Kirk. Referee Fight. sends the fighters to their corners. Fight. And we are ready to go. Phil, the opening seconds are going to be telling. Rolic wants to keep it at distance so he can do those long range Sanda kicks. It is essentially a striker versus grappler dynamic. I know fighters are very well versed in all forms of martial arts, but you have the Judoka taking on the Wushu Sanda striker, and what a crashing leg kick to start. Rolich's footwork is very impressive. He's popping in, popping out, popping in. Look at the speed of that Sanda push kick. Yamalov looks a little bit like a kid who's staring at a merry-go-round and isn't quite sure when to jump in. He wants to close that distance, and I think you're going to try and see him get his hands on Vadim Rolic. Again, Phil, this goes back to the base, the base art of judo. You, you intentionally move forward into that space, both of you, and uh, grab each other. It's a huge part of that sport when an opponent's popping in and out, doesn't allow for the grab. It makes life a lot harder. Yamalov trying to punch his way to the oh! inside. Beautiful spinning back kick from Rolic. That definitely got Yamalov's attention. Oh, and a beautiful straight right down the pipe. Yamalov eats it well and pops right back up. Phil, in keeping with that Sanda background where there's not a lot of groundwork, if any, knocked his opponent down, invited him right back up to try and knock him down again. Rolich is incredibly light on his feet for a big man. I like the level changes that you're seeing from Rolich here. He's faking the shoot, he may come over the top, and that's another big crashing kick. Rulic, what there, now he's resuming that in and out, in and out style that makes it so hard to tie up with the opponent. And he's just showing that lead hook when Yamalov is coming in. That may be something he catches Yamalov with as he comes in. Another spinning back kick, showing the diversity of his striking repertoire. Again, Phil, those kicks coming in from every angle are so characteristic of Sanda. You saw it right, left, center. And I like how he's keeping that jab hand nice and low out of the peripheral vision of Yamalov almost inviting him to come in, then catching him with a shot. Nice crushing jab, and Rolic looks very confident and light on the feet here. He needs to be careful, can't get his back against the cage like that, against someone with Yamalov's striking ability, trading, spinning back kicks. Not often you see a judoka trying a spin kick. Wanted to say to his man, if you can do that, I can do it too. Right now, Rulich definitely looks like the more comfortable fighter. He's doubling up on the jab as he's coming forward. Perhaps we'll see him put a straight behind that. He was successful with one straight right down the middle. I'm worried with Yamalov looping that overhand right so much. Shortest distance between two spaces, of course, is a straight line, a straight right, a jab. He may end up eating one of those on the oh, way in. Huge jumping knee from a 93 kilo man. Yamalov just eats it. Nice work on the angles. The footwork of Rolich is incredibly impressive so far. 
Yamalov momentarily looked like he was going to spin there. Yamalov, Yamalov did get caught throwing that low kick earlier. He didn't commit to it quite as hard this time, and he was successful with it. I think you'll probably see that at least once more. Another big spinning attack from Rolich. And Kirk, talk to me a little bit about what the leg kicks will do with the investment that Rolich is making in those leg kicks. How will they unfold as the fight progresses? They are money in the bank. What you've got is a situation here where one fighter clearly has, Rolich clearly has the better footwork. Mm -hmm. And the more he can land those low kicks, the better his footwork is going to be relative to his opponent, and that's what matters. It just seems the majority of things that Rolich is throwing here are landing and getting through. Yamalov really needs to mix something up just a little bit. Again, another stiff job from Rulich. Got through with a little uppercut to overhand. Rolich may be over-relying on those looping shots like you saw right there. Like to see him come straight down the middle, mix it up a little bit. It's almost as if Yamalov's trying to find that one big fight ending shot. Rolich trying to pop a knee up. There's the first initiation of the clinch from Yamalov, but not long left in the round. 10 seconds, can he complete a takedown? Oh, that is big for Yamalov. End of the round. And Kiri, now Yamalov is aware that he has the ability and possesses the skills to take Rolich down. Do you think he should have taken down earlier? Absolutely, Phil. That, that, those closing seconds were absolutely huge. I think Rolich may have known how much time was left and basically conceded the takedown. I don't think that was a wise thing to do. Now his opponent knows or believes strongly, if I can get in close, if I can get a hold of my opponent, then I can put him on his back where he's not dancing around me in a circle and skip, skip, spin kicking me into Bolivia. There was that beautiful catch and reply from Vadim And It's the precision of the striking from Vadim Rulich that is so impressive. Here you see the takedown from Yamalov, which is bound to give him confidence moving into the second round. You may see an attempt at closing the distance, engaging in the clinch a little bit earlier from Yamalov. A little unusual, Phil. Either fighter chose to use a stool. He's sitting down on the ground a little bit like George Foreman when he was a boxer, would stand in the boxing ring in between rounds. Cool seeing these two gentlemen sit down, listen to a little bit of advice from their corner, stand up, and entertain us for round two. Go. Both these fighters eager to get going. Rolich will have to be aware of the takedown threat that Yamalov now poses. But again, investing in those leg kicks. And again, that's going to impede, not only impede upon the, the offense of Yamalov, it's also going to impede upon his ability to get out of the way of the offense of Rolich. Phil Rolich may be just a little bit overconfident. I'd like to see him moving just a little bit more. He had great success with it in round one. I think he feels like he's got a sense of his opponent's timing. He's got a sense of his opponent's reach and reflexes, and he can now take advantage of it without a ton of footwork. But I'm not certain that's the case. And that was beautiful. Nice shift into a right high kick to the melon. Just glanced with the head kick. And obviously, with that wushu sand the background, Rolich is very comfortable in either stance. Dangerous from either stance. Gives almost doubles up on his offensive weapons with his uh, stance switching. Rolich, the, the cleaner striker, doesn't want to get drawn into a stand and bind type firefight. Nice work to the body there from Rolich. Oh, that's a huge kick to the body. Yamalov shakes it off. But as we know in mixed martial arts, Kirik, when a fighter does that, he's invariably saying, yes, you tag me. This was a beautiful example of boxing versus Sanda. In boxing, you use the distance management is accomplished via that jab. That's what we saw, a beautiful jab from Yamalov. In Sanda, distance management is, a con a con is 
done by footwork and by those push kicks. And that was a beautiful answer with a push kick from Rolic. Big swinging shots from Yamalov. Rolic defending the takedown well here. Now finds himself in the dominant position. Yamalov holding on. But Yamalov again trying to get in on that takedown. Rolic doing the right thing by splitting the base, trying to stay nice and wide. Has one underhook. But again, it was the single leg that worked for Yamalov last time. It worked this time. Needs to be wary Triangle of the triangle. Set up possible. And just slides off. Nice awareness from Yamalov, who's now, for the first time in the fight, in the dominant position, able to get some of his offense. We are at halftime in this round, Phil. There is a lot of time for Yamalov to take advantage of this situation. Just trying to step over into the half guard. Rolich does have one butterfly hook here. May use that to try and sweep. Nice work from Yamalov. Just brushes the legs to the side. Rolich does well to reclaim guard. Rolich manages to get back up to his feet, but was it wasted energy with Yamalov back on him and on the single. Could switch to a high crotch. Big moment for Rolich. Survived the ground attack, went up to standing, didn't get his back taken, escaped. We saw Yamalov trying to step in to get that judo working. But oh, he eats a huge shot there from Rolich. A massive spin and back fist. Rolich clearly did not appreciate that time on his back. It's payback time. I think the point you made, Kirik, about Yamalov perhaps fading a little bit as the fight went on because he took it on such short notice may be coming to fruition. I believe it is. If you look at his reflexes, those reflexes have slowed just slightly. The jaw isn't quite as tight. The mouth is coming open at points. These are the signs of a fatigued fighter. And you just saw him take a very big, deep breath there. And that cage becomes a very, very lonely place when you're gasping for breath and have someone trying to take your head off. Vadim McGain with the hands low, trying to bait Yamalov to come in. Again, another big leg kick. Rolich had big success the one time I saw him shift in this fight. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to shift once more, take his opponent out of there. Everything from Yamalov is coming just a little bit slower. Big spin and back kick. Oh, he hurt him. He's hurt. The spinning back kick did the damage to Grand Point. It's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that team Rolex with a huge win. Wushu Sander in the house. That was huge. That beautiful spinning back kick, the delayed reaction from the fighter. When you get hit to the body, it's clean to the liver. There is that momentary little glitch in the matrix for it to kick in. For those of you in Brave Nation who have not been blasted in the liver before, it's not a matter of will at this point. For $100 billion, once you get hit that cleanly, there is nothing you can do but collapse. Serious outpouring of emotion from Vadim Rulli. Scaled the cage, and right now he's just lying in the center, taking it all in. Enjoy your moment, young man. <laughs> Take down on the coach, but friendly big pile. Here we see a clean striking. Vadim Rulli. Kovancho Yamalov is nearly off the floor. This was the moment where we thought that Yamalov would be able to get a little bit of offense, but he wasn't able to keep Rolic pinned down. See the big shots fired in by Rolic. Spinning back has just glanced the gloves of Yamalov. And, and there it is! Oh, that needed so much it kick him, was... his kick through him. That was beautiful. Ended up being a shot to the spleen. Follows up with some Brian and find out. Then it's all over to make an official lead and gentlemen, with Mr. Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible battle again in the Brave CF 51 RSM cage. This bout 
comes to an end at four minutes and 35 seconds of the second round. Your winner by knockout from Minx Belarus, Vadim Ralic. Vadim Ralic gets the biggest win in his young mixed martial arts career, moves to three on one, always coming by way of stomping and the ever-growing, ever-evolving Brave Combat Federation light heavyweight division, we may have just honored someone very, very special. Still the earlier shots were just set up for the final bout ending kick. A couple of different setups were tried, landed but not quite perfectly. Our fighter built up a sense of timing over a period of about eight, nine minutes and then put it all together perfectly. Dead lines, a couple of spinning black kicks, but they weren't just as clean as he would have liked to find his range with it. Absolutely blasted Yamalov. That, that would have been the ender. That was a split second, a centimeter away from being a fight ender early on in the fight. And it's very rare you see a guy that big have that mobility, have that fluidity of striking the spinning kicks, the flight knees, the black fists. Absolutely outstanding work from Vadim Rolich. I'm very interested to see what he will do next in Brave Combat Federation. As I say, the light heavyweight division of Brave Combat Federation is ever growing, ever evolving. Vadim Rolich just made a statement. Bill, every loss is a lesson, but some wins, even big wins like this one, they can be lessons too. Vadim Rolich wants to work a little bit on his takedown defense. He did a great job of standing up when he was taken down, but he needs to be become a little bit harder to take down. If he gets that, if he can force the fight to stay standing so that he can do what he loves to do, throw unbelievable Sanda spinning kick, spinning strikes, he is going to become a force in the Brave Combat Federation cage. When you look at the, the guys that we have in that division, you have guys like Anton Tukali, guys like Todd Stout, Mohamed Bakhradi. It's an ever-growing division, and it just became a little bit more exciting with the addition of Vadim Lodic. is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. Anastasia Feofanova is looking to get her eighth career win when she meets undefeated Turkish star, Sevda Turk. Coming up next, Anastasia Feofanova clashes with Sevda Turk in a strawweight bout. All right, Privatanya Minsk! It's time for the ladies to go to battle inside the Brave CF 51 RSM cage. All right, Brave Nation, here we go. This next bout is three five minute rounds in the straw weight division as the ladies let the leather fly. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This lady is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and no losses. She stands 168 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 51.9 kilograms. Fighting out of Sakaria, Turkey and representing Sakaria Sport Club, please welcome Sam And her opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This lady is a weak martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and one loss. She stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 51.5 kilograms. Representing our team and fighting out of Kaliningrad, Russia. Give it up for our own Anastasia Feofan. 
Nova. Your referee is Alec Miller-Yakov. Tail of the tape, you see Anastasia, little bit older, little bit taller. And they both cut the figure of two very different fighters during the introduction. Seb the Turk was absolutely loving it. Anastasia, chill out as you like. Here we go. All these ladies are engaging straight away. Fail for net. Fail. <coughs> Excuse me. Anastasia landed cleanly two or three times in there, I think forcing the clinch. Sev the Turk trying to get in on that guillotine, predicated from the takedown attempt from Anastasia and at this stage when they're so strong and they're they're not sweating this is when you can really get that grip on a submission need to see whether the hands are connected the elbows a little bit high to get a finish right now but there is a lot of pressure on the neck as you can see elbows lowering a little bit elbows lowering Phil maybe a reverse if that grip gets reversed no head is out nice work from Anastasia to stay calm showing her experience in not just grappling, but all round mixed martial arts. Trying to get the takedown, has the double underhooks, may look for the trip here from the back. And Sevda looking for a, a schoolyard throw. Anastasia just taking her time, trying to wear on her opponent. Has those double underhooks, I'm surprised I haven't seen a trip takedown yet. Trying to break her opponent's base, trying to force the opponent's shoulders back over the hips, but she's finding out Sevde has a strong core. Good head positioning from Anastasia, just trying to get that head underneath the chin of Sevde, who does a great job of framing off there. Sevde Turk desperately trying to get a little bit of separation, has that heavy whizzer. And again, Kirik, in positions like this in mixed martial arts, you know, to the uninitiated, it looks like nothing's going on, but this is the most tiring aspect of the sport. It is, Phil. It's not mixed martial arts without it. The positioning of the head plays a crucial role. Some people call it giraffe fighting. If you've ever seen a National Geographic special on giraffes, the males do fight using their head. And you just saw a takedown driven by the head. The Russian is now on top. Beautiful work from Feofanova. As soon as she got that head positioning just underneath the chin of Sevda, she controlled where the fight went. Trying to work here for a crucifix and land some strikes. Feofanova again just taking her time, showing her experience. Arms trapped, other arms trapped. And that's the crucifix established. Doesn't need to be landing really heavy shots here. It's all about frequency as Sevda isn't able to intelligently defend herself. Turk needs to get onto her side, onto her left side, and try and yank that arm out. She may want to run her legs in one direction first to get a little bit of momentum for it. Wall walking not likely to work here. Fail for Nova switching it up between the punches and the elbows. Crowd here split. Really getting into this one. A little bit of a neck crank there from Fair from over, but the punches are getting through. Get about 100 seconds left in this bout. Turk trying to do a little bit of wall walking here. Getting a little summing on those elbows. Feofanova may be looking to take that arm home with her. You can see she's trying to apply the pressure with that wrist control, trying to get that arm off Turk prone on the ground. Nice little bit of offense there off her back from Turk, trying to get those elbows off. Turk absolutely still in this fight completely, despite being stuck on her back. Needs to be wary of the triangle here. Beautiful inverted triangle there. Loose triangle, almost a head scissor. Can be used to apply a lot of pressure to the opponent's neck. Oh, trying to grab the other. There's the top, there's the top. I'm not quite sure if it was the reverse triangle or if it was the extension of the arm, but that was beautiful. Beautiful work from Fail Fanova again showing just how well rounded she is. Absolutely doesn't really matter which one the tap was to as long as she got the tap. 
Anastasia Mayo-Fanova is victorious. Again. As calm and as methodical as you like. Theo Fanova getting it done here in her Brave Combat Federation debut with a beautiful display of wrestling and submission savvy. Hopefully we're going to see that submission again after we get the official decision. Just the dominance here, establishing the position, not rushing it, and methodically working it. There was a solid attempt to sweep there. Lesser fighter might have fallen for it, but as you said, very calm from top. But again, we saw nice work for both of these fighters. Those elbows from bottom are painful. There you see just the, yep, it was the reverse triangle that did it, I think. It was a neck crank, if I had to guess right there. The head was pushed in an unfortunate position, forcing the tap. It's now going to be made official by Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an exciting battle in the Brave 51 cage. With the ladies letting the leather fly. This comes to an end at 4 minutes and 23 seconds of the first round. Your winner by Triangle Joke. Anastasia Feofanova! There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Anastasia Feofanova gets the win with that beautiful inverted triangle moving the potential record to eight and one moving the win streak to six fights. Incredible work from Feofanova. Gonna see just in a got I air position. The takedown was inevitable. Such a tough position the Turk was stuck in here, Bill. Both arms are trapped. The head is completely exposed to those shots. Excellent try, but a cradle sweep was not successful. But again, by breaking the opponent, grip of the fist, Turk did get off. by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Idemir Kazbekov is looking to extend his undefeated record as he faces Abdul Karim Badakhshi, one of Afghani MMA's brightest stars. Coming up next, Idemir Kazbekov takes on Abdul Karim the Rock Badakhshi in a bantamweight bout. All right, Brave Nation, we're gonna continue our historic night by welcoming our next warriors into the Brave CF 51 RSM cage. This next bout is three five minute rounds in a bantamweight battle. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of five wins and no losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 60.9 kilograms. Representing Badakshi Jim and fighting out of Kabul, Afghanistan. Please welcome Abdul Karim The Rock Badakshi. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of seven wins and no losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.05 kilograms. 
representing Baltic Bears and fighting out of Kaliningrad, Russia. Give it up for I. Demir Your referee in charge is Ali Milayakov. Tale of the tape. Both these fighters, young at 24, 23, respectively. Slight height advantage to Abdul Karim Badakshi. We are ready to go here at Brave Combat Federation 51. Ready? Ready? Fight! First round! Interesting to see who gets off first. Abdul Karim Badaxi trying to implement that striking game. Has that guard very high. Badaxi's hips are just a little bit low, though. He knows that. Woo! Beautiful question mark kick attempt. But then surely that lends itself to Kazbekov to get his striking off if his opponent is preoccupied with the threat of the takedown. Well, we're seeing a lot of different threats here from the Dagestan fighter. And we haven't, seen him, we haven't seen him throw a punch yet. Oh, that's a beautiful leg kick. Kazbekov showing just how well-rounded he is. We know the wrestling threat is always there. Seeing some fast slicks, slick kicks. Swing and a miss from Badakshi. Nice, calm work from Kazbekov. Catch and reply from Badaxi. Kazbekov taking the center and slowly edging his opponent to the fence. There's the first takedown. Attempt unsuccessful. I love the way he readjusted there. He realized that there was a slight impediment caused by the cage. He brings his opponent out and then completes the takedown. Very, very smart. Very, very smart. Very, very successful. Right here It'll be where. huge if Badakshi can get back to his feet and stay there. The problem is it's uh, tough to get up to your feet and even tougher in those split seconds when you first go to standing to stay there. But we have seen it as and then again a second time. Badakshi is down. That's a beautiful trip takedown. And what he's doing so well is he's not tense. He's staying nice and loose, which makes him distribute his weight so much better on his opponents. But when you're an international master of sport and freestyle wrestling, these things tend to come naturally. This is mastery that we're watching here. But again, Badakshi trying to get back in those feet. Denied for now a third time. Guard pass, very cleanly done. Actually trying to get that knee shield back and to turn in and at the very least try and reclaim half guard. Again, a common theme that we've been seeing tonight is that of the crucifix to isolate the arms. Again, good head pressure from Kazbekov. Kazbekov is past those hips, looking for a, likely looking for a back take. Ended up with a leg shelved. Going to be able to land a couple of shots before that shelf has escaped. So intelligently just raising the feet up and, and lifting up the hips of his opponent. Now he goes for a Dajestani handcuff. Again, just a hand behind the back of his opponent. Oh, but could Badaxi be getting out? What balance illustrated there by Kazbekov. A little bit of acrobatics, very, very slick from Idemir Kazbekov. Now inside the guard, the opening guard of Abdul Karim Badakshi. Triangle. Oh, triangle, yes. that's clean. If he can underhook the leg, this could be absolutely huge. Head has to be controlled. Oh, it could be switching to the arm bar. Looking for an arm bar now. No. That Looking for the armbar, Phil. What a win this would be for and Abdul Karim Badaxi. That's absolutely huge. The Rock puts his opponent out. Abdul Karim Badaxi with an absolutely huge win. And I think he may have choked. I don't know if that's off unconscious. He absolutely put his opponent out to sleep with a triangle choke. What a win! Joins his brother Abdul Azim Badaxi in the winner's circle. Big night for the.
the Rock. Big night for Afghanistan and a big night for Jiu-Jitsu. Let's watch a little bit more of this action on replay brought to us by Green Hill. And that is why I love mixed martial arts. Idemir Kazbegov looked like he was in the dominant position. He was controlling the grappling and just in a split second after Kareem Badaxi throws off a fight ending triangle. Here it is, Bill. You can see how tight it is. He sweeps with it, tries to transition or considers transitioning to an arm bar. Keeps it locked. Keeps it in there, squeezes the knees together, looks for the arm bar as well. Referee notices that that opponent is out. That was a perfect squeeze on my It's a big official lead to the gentleman, Mr. Carlos Kramer. Another incredible bout on this Brave CF 51 RSM card. This comes to an end at four minutes and eight seconds of the very first round. Your winner by triangle choke, Abdul Kareem The Rock Badakshi. Abdul Kareem Badakshi introducing himself on the global stage with a fight and triangle. Locks it up with a beautiful angle, jokes his opponent unconscious, remains undefeated now at 6 and 0. Oh. Let's get another look at some of that action, Kirik. One of the amazing things still about mixed martial arts is you can actually be too successful. If you're too successful with your strike, you become predictable, you can get taken down. If you're too successful with your wrestling and your top pin, the opponent can look for a submission and sometimes find it, as we saw right here. This fight card so far has been incredible. Full of finishes. A friend of mine just messaged me saying, you guys must have an incredible after party plan because the guys are trying to finish the fight so quick to get to it. This is the beauty of mixed martial arts. Dominant wrestling from Kazbekov. But all you need in mixed martial arts is that split second. That's why we love this sport. High risk, high reward. Beautiful angle on the triangle. Cut it so well. Showing tremendous leg strength there, too. Some fighters need to get that foot fully underneath the knee and get a big angle on the body. Foot was not. It was a little bit of a loose figure four there on the neck. But given that extreme of the body and the tremendous leg strength shown by The Rock, it was more than enough. Technical submission by The Rock, Kareem Badaxi. I'm loving the slow motion camera replace that I have almost has an extra degree of theater and poetry to what we're seeing here. You can see just how much it means that after Kareem Badaxi to get a win. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Padmatsar in Dorjiev is eager to make a great impression in his first Brave CF bout when he meets Almanbat Abdivasi Ul, who's eager to maintain Kyrgyzstani fighters' winning streak. Coming up next, Padmatsar in BC Dorjiev takes on Almanbat Abdivasi Ulu in a flyweight bout. All right, Brave Nation, let's continue our incredible night with the beautiful people of Minsk, Belarus, with a flyweight bout. This next bout is three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfection record of nine wins and four losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 57 kilograms, representing I call Mana's Club and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan. Put your hands together for Alman Bet Abdivasi. Oh! 
no! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of five wins and no losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 57.05 kilograms. Representing Evolve Jim Moscow and fighting out of Moscow, Russia. Please welcome Bad Matsiren BC Dark Your referee is Andre Pivovarov. Tail of the tape. Bad Matsuin Doshev, a little bit older at 27. Everything else is virtually identical. We are about to get kicking off here. Flyweight action, Brave Combat Federation 51. Touch of the gloves to start. Level changes from Bad Matsarian, trying to get a little bit of a bite from his opponent. Both these guys, very similar build. A little bit of a feeling out process here, Kirik. Both men obviously respect the skills of one another. Alman Bet trying to come straight down the center with a, either a kick or a punch. He's going to try and land it straight in. There was the first one. Nice level changes from Bat Matsarian. Very strategic opening to the, the bout here. Both guys trying to get a read on each other. That's the second time Batman Sarian has gone for that inside leg touch. You may see him do that just to come up top with an overhand. Try and beat his opponent into reacting. He's got to watch his threatened knee if he's a little too, little too slow and a little too obvious with that takedown. Batman Sarian mixing up with the hands and the kicks. Ulu getting ready to launch something big. There he is in on that takedown. Bull rushes his opponent towards the cage. Double underhooks, big takedown. Well, he's doing everything he can to establish a dominant position in the half guard. Right now showing his wrestling savvy by not rushing it, not trying to do too much at once by position before anything else. Establish that position and then go to work, Kirik. Statistically, it's tough to get a takedown. It's even harder to hold somebody down. Thus far, we're seeing an excellent job on top from Dorchiev. Alman Bet staying calm, trying to dig in for the underhook, trying to scoot back to the fence and use that to wall walk up, but Doing a good job, he's up to a knee. Very nice work from Alman Bet. Excellent job by Ulu, using that cage to strip his opponent's arms off of his back. And now you see Alman Bet in on a takedown of his own. That's huge that he was able to take down the freestyle wrestling champion. Has the hands connected just underneath the posterior of Bad Matsurin. Bad Matsurin manages to get back up. If you are a fan of wrestling and mixed martial arts, this is an absolute treat. Once again, absolutely fantastic matchmaking from the Brave Combat Federation matchmaking team. Our president, Muhammad Haq, the Hawk Shahid, always involved in this, assisted by several people. So a tick down, a piece for the gentleman inside the cage thus far. Dorchev has landed the greater number of strikes. Some of the more telling strikes, those leg kicks, but beautiful takedown again. The injury on that was absolutely sumptuous, Kirik. Absolutely, the timing it takes, the number that the, the, you talked about, how if you train hard, fighting is easy. What you saw is a perfect example of that. If you have done that shot in the gym thousands of times, yeah, you can make it look easy, but of course it's not. And I like the work from Bad Matsurin finishing the takedown away from the cage this time, because last time 
Armand Bet was able to use the cage to get back up. Now it's right in the open of the cage. Very smart work. Yeah, what you're seeing here is the evolution of mixed martial arts. It used to be the common wisdom was once you took somebody down, you wanted to push them up against the cage in order to hold them there. But people developed techniques to use that cage to walk back up off the floor. Now, as you noted, the smart place to put somebody is dead center, and the most genius place is towards the center but close to your own corner so you can hear your corner's instructions and your opponent cannot. Alman Bet has been trying to scoot back and edge towards that cage. He's got himself back against the cage. Can he use it to get himself up again? Nice pressure work here from Bad Matsurin. Elbow coming, there it was. Just trying to get a couple of strikes in there. There you go, end of the first round. A very cagey affair to start, Terry. It was. It was very intelligent, though. This is intelligent fighting. This is fighting is supposed to look like when you don't let your emotions run away from you. When you look at some of the action there, both men trying to get the strikes off. Take right against the huge first take right off the fight. Come from the game from Bad Mastering. That second takedown is the big game. The injury ended up flawless. This might just be the closing stand of all the fights. Interesting to put that from Alma Bet to the corner. Actually, sitting down on the cage as opposed to still being used by Bad Matsu. Both corners very intelligently uh, applying ice to their fighters. Because of the television lights that make this worldwide broadcast possible, it gets extremely hot inside the Brave Combat Federation cage. That ice can be vital in reducing the fighter's temperature so they can give you another great round. Nice show of respect there from the fighters. But Matsun trying to give his opponent different looks. The threat of that takedown, which, as I've said before, could lend itself to open on, opening up a striking opportunity. Alman Bet just showing Dorchiev the knee, letting him know that it's there if he comes in lazy with the takedown. Oh, nice strike over the top from Bad Matsurin. Seems to find his range a little bit quicker in the second round. Constantly changing levels as Bad Matsurin. I'm on bet doing the right thing by circling away from the cage. Can't be skirting. He's landing that shot at well. I'm on bet becoming just a little hesitant to pull the trigger on those shots. I think he wants to actually turn it up just a little bit here. Try and give his opponent a slightly different look. Amon Bet trying to find his rhythm, trying to find his range. But it's not quite there yet. But Matsurin began freestyle wrestling at age 11. That is 16 years competing in wrestling, a multiple time freestyle national champion. Also showing that he's got very clean boxing. Lands his shots and gets out of the pocket very well. Brave Nation, it takes a ton of time, if your background is in wrestling, to develop excellent strikes with good time. Wrestling is basically all pulling, boxing, of course, all pushing. Rhythm's different, timing's different, speed versus endurance needs are different. It's very hard to acquire this level of skills in both wrestling and in boxing. So the more effective output so far in the second round has come from Dorchiev. Again, beautiful timing on the takedown. He waited for Alman Bet to land his strikes, planted the feet, ducked down underneath, and gets the takedown right in the center of the Brave Arena. 
But Mazzarin now needs to take advantage of this takedown. A takedown in and of itself does not mean a lot in a mixed martial arts fight under the latest interpretation of the unified rules. And that, now we're starting to see something done with it. Doing a good job with that paper cutter, just framing off. Applying pressure to the throat. It's not going to get him to tap, but it is going to take his mind off other things to open up something like a pass, like it just did. Very intelligent from Dorchiev. Clean guard pass. Establishes the side control. Heavy hips keeping nice and low. Momentarily looked like he was going to step over the head. Little short elbows. May try and isolate a wrist here. Man on the bottom. What does he need to do in this position, Kerry? He needs to move those hips a little bit more. He's too content to be flat on his back. Once you're flat on your back, there really isn't much that you're going to be able to do to get at her. He needs to pivot his body, turn his hips in towards his opponent, shrimp those hips away, and then start to work. Just you can see why the wrestling of Bad Matsurin is so highly thought of controlling the hips of Alman Bet at the minute. Alman Bet is managing to, to, to control to a significant degree any hard shots coming in, but he's not able to control his opponent. He's not able to win this fight, and that's what this sport is all about. It's not about being able to survive. Bad Matsurin trying to get that knee on belly, thought about transitioning into the mount. Realized he was slightly off balance. Back into the safety of the side control. Switches the scarf. Very, very dominant work from Bad Matsurin. Bad Matsurin may be thinking about sliding right up across to mount. Nice work from the fighter from Kyrgyzstan. Used his opponent's aggression to get back to a closed guard. From this closed guard, he wants to try and control his opponent's head to limit leverage. He wants to try and sweep. He wants to try and submit to take the back. Thus far, we've just seen defense. Well, for the first time tonight, we will be going into a third round here again. For my money at the minute, but Matsuri is up to two rounds. So we're really going to see Almadet, where he has to. He has to come out with the rear impetus, and he has to get finished in order to win this fight. Phil, I feel the exact same way you do, and I say that with a high degree of confidence. I believe the corners here both know what's going on. Who needs to finish his opponent in this third and final round? Quite simply, he cannot get taken down in this third round. He's going to have to get on the bike. He's going to have to employ a lot of movement and land and strike. The thing is, as we've seen so often in mixed martial arts, Gary, when a fighter is chasing the finish, they leave himself vulnerable. People like to take down or being finished themselves. That's exactly right, Phil. He needs to try and end the fight in this round, but he cannot do it by throwing one, two, one, two, while moving forward. That will accomplish only getting put on his back. He needs to employ feints, circular movement, try and break through his opponent's but thus far, unstoppable will, and then land a big shot. Your third and final ride in this flyweight fight. And surely if you were in the corner of Bad Matsurin, you would just say it's a lather rinse repeat performance in the third round. Absolutely, keep doing it. It's never wise in a corner if your opponent, if your fighter is winning, let them keep doing what they're doing. Spinning back kick attempt from Bad Matsurin. Really need to see something a little bit more offensive from Alman Betts. There it is, nice stiff job. He needs to follow that up with something. He can try and counter. If he feels like he has a, a clear, full sense of his, it, he can do what he's trying to do there, back up and then land a shot. But it's a lot harder than initiating a shot. Big swing and miss from Bad Matsurin. I'm on bet, probably, I'm on bet's probably gonna throw one more shot. He's shifting a little bit. He's trying to draw his opponent in to time him coming in. Both fighters shifting now. 
And going from Orthodox to South, South Pole and back. And in a situation like this, Bad Matsurin, he's happy to, to wait it out. You know, he knows he's up two rounds. The, the, the impetus really doesn't lie with him to make something happen here, Kirik. It does not. He should do exactly what he's, he's been doing. Just fight his fight. If the takedown's there, go for it. Stay on top. Don't lose position by trying anything too crazy. Instead, employ a tight, careful grind. Dorchiev is showing us how you win a fight in mixed martial arts on the unified rules. And there it was. And on the single, manages to get the takedown. Arm on bet manages to get back up, but good work to swing the hips, almost like a golf club swing to get his opponent on the ground. Alman Bet looking for a key lock, Kimura from bottom, unsuccessful with it. Nice head position from Bad Matsurin, just underneath the chin of his opponent. Does Alman Bet have enough left in the tank to work for that stand up? He is trying for it, did try to bump his opponent there. But again, great control, per potential for a head on triangle set up here from Bad Matsurin. Beautiful job to step over into the mount position. Shelf the legs momentarily. May take the back here, Kerik. He's, I believe he's now going to actually allow his opponent to try and stand and use that, that tiny little moment his opponent stands to fully take the back. Slowly trying to get that arm underneath. Alman Bet doing the right thing, going two on one on the choking arm. Alman Bet ideally at this point would pass that arm over to the far side of his head. At that point, he would have a very real chance of escaping. Little rules clarification. You can hold on to an opponent's glove, but you can't slide your fingers inside of it. That's what we saw here very inadvertently, I believe. Bad Matsurin happy to work with that one hook in. If he gets two hooks in, it would be disastrous for Almond Bet. Dorchev in no hurry at all to finish the fight. He knows that he's essentially up the two rounds and is in the ascendancy in this round, Kirik. He is thus far, same as it ever was. Doesn't need to take any unnecessary risks. Has the dominant position. Happy to land his strikes. Just trying to isolate that wrist. And if you're Almond Bet, you have to go all out. You have to explode now to try and pop up. At this point, you've got to either try and stand or victory roll, possibly even offer your opponent something in hopes of escaping it. But right now in this fight, it is all Bad Matsurin Dorchiev. <laughs> 20 seconds left in the third and final round. Methodical workmanlike performance from the 27 year old from Evolve Gym Moscow, Russia. And surely he is on his way to a unanimous points decision, Kirk. And that ends it.
another classic battle inside the Brave CF RSM 51 cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and all three judges score the bout a unanimous decision victory. Out of the red corner, that's Nisirian BC Bad Mazarin Dorsier in the brief queen in his brief of our federation baby a fun away to find yourself on the movie stage here. for the world to see. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and one loss. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.65 kilograms. Representing Bulgarian top team and fighting out of Lyon, France. Please welcome Yanis, the Desert Warrior, Gamoy! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins, four losses, and one no contest. He stands 100. 75 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.4 kilograms. Representing Phoenix team and Great Dan Jim and fighting out of Minsk, Belarus. Please welcome Vladislav Yellow Novitsky. Your referee is Ali Milayakov. 
Tail of the tape, not a lot between these two fighters. Their reception, Vladislav got from the partisan Belarusian crowd here. Phil, this is not a hometown hero, this is a hometown superhero we're watching. Kirik does that put additional pressure, being in your hometown, fighting on a huge stage, or is he the type of fighter that's going to thrive in this kind of situation? By the looks of it, 100%. I'm looking at a calm fighter. He's smooth, he's focused, not feeling that pressure at all, just feeling uplifted by it. I fully expect to see Yanis Gamori invest in the leg kicks early. Incredible low kicking game from the young man. Has immobilized a number of opponents in such a fashion. Vladislav moving very cleverly, circling left, circling right. When he stops, he's fainting. Opponent doesn't quite know matter what to make of it yet. He's coming in with shots, but they're relatively light. He's not committing to anything. This is really high-level fighting. This is what you do in order to learn what your opponent is like. Don't commit to something because you could get knocked out. Perfect example right there. Quick little jab, pop back, saw his opponent throw a hook. Now he's got a sense of what his opponent's reaction time is like, and it did it. he did it completely safely. Giannis Gomori, a very elusive fighter, gets a distance and range often very quickly in his fights, and he's happy. No clash of shins there. As I say, Gomori is happy to let his opponent walk on to shots, but that's a huge leg kick from Nowitzki. Yellow lands a big one. Desert Warrior tries to answer in kind, still a little bit tight, slips. Never mind yellow, the leg of Gomori is going to be black and blue if he takes any more of those leg kicks. Very impressed by Vladislav so far. This is exactly how you should open a fight. Download a lot of information without putting yourself in any danger and look okay doing it. Nice front kick, push kick there from Gomori to the knee, hyper extending a la John Jones. Incredibly nasty technique. Always makes me cringe a little bit when I see that push kick to the knee. Interesting though, it's Nowitzki who has found uh, the range and timing a little bit quicker. I think, Phil, he was more consciously doing it. He, he moved in a circle, he fainted in and out, trying to draw his opponent in. Long before that shot had, would come in, he had popped out of the way, downloaded all that information. Now he's getting pretty close to the point where he has what he needs to know, and he's going to start opening up a little bit. Nowitzki looking very less in there. Gamori has switched his stance a number of times. Now getting a little bit of leg kicking offense off. You can tell both these guys very technical when it comes to the striking. Happy to play it out on the feet. Both men confident in the striking. Nice, stiff jab from Vladislav. Nice side kick. You don't see that too often in mixed martial arts. And it follows it up with a whipping leg kick. I'd like to see a little bit more of that from Gomori. Desert Warrior has big respect for his opponent's striking ability. That's why he's not fully committing to those leg kicks. He's putting them out there like that, like that, not fully rolling the hips over. Really, really technical display of striking here from both men. Both men throwing their strikes really clean. I'm enjoying the little leg kicking battle they have going on. Novitsky using that pendulum kick very successfully to destabilize opponent. He did it twice successfully. The third time, he's going to take advantage of it. Nice attempt at the question mark kick. He landed a number of low kicks and then went high. Some wonderful hip dexterity to get that off, but huge kicks again by Nowitzki. This is a great fight, Kirk. This is absolutely technical mastery. Oh, again, feigned to go low with the kick, came up top and just skimmed the head of Nowitzki. Nice counter hook there. Nowitzki been employing very successfully, has been employing in and out footwork the whole time, was able to sail away from that head kick. Escaped it by just an inch or less. And leg kick for leg kick. Nice stiff inside leg kick. And then a crushing jab to follow up. 
I'd like to see Gamoy put the hands together and finish with the leg kicks, really chain those attacks together rather than single shots. That's exactly why he's not, Phil. The counters we're seeing here from Yellow are very, very nasty. Putting together more than a single shot in a row could be a fight ender for you. Nevisky constantly switching stances, giving his opponent different looks, different entries into the kicking game. Still very light on the feet is Nowitzki. Ah, kick for kick, I'm loving that. It's almost that, that Muay Thai mentality, you land, then I land, then you land. Crowd loved that. They were going back and forth a little bit. Looked like Gamori might have been pulling ahead. Now Nowitzki may have pulled it out just by a little bit on the judges' scorecards thus far in the fight. Only 45 seconds in. I'm really enjoying the movement of Nowitzki. He's not being a static target for his opponent. Constantly moving, constantly forcing his opponent to readjust. Careering forward with big shots. Nowitzki starting to string his attacks together, unlike his opponent. He's starting to have the confidence. He's starting to have the understanding of his opponent's technique and reflexes, so he feels like he can throw multiple shots without getting knocked out. Starting to finish nicely with those leg kicks, landing the hands and finishing, just cutting the shin into the meat of the leg of Gamora. You can see the inside starting to redden up a little bit. A little bit too far away just for the head kick there. Brave, no Brave Nation, the, the point on the leg that those kicks are aimed at is of critical importance. If you kick mid-thigh, the opponent can grab, like you saw right there. That oh, was a huge kick buckling the leg of Nowitzki. Nowitzki is aiming those shots just above the knee, where they're nearly impossible to catch without at least a level change or otherwise doing something. And again, a push kick to the knee, hyper extending the knee joint. Some people call that push kick to the knee a dirty move. That's silly. It's no more dangerous than anything else. Punching somebody in the head or kicking somebody in the head's dangerous too. Yeah, at the end of the day, Carrick, it's a fight in a cage. It's a fight in a cage <laughs> held under rules. Those kicks are absolutely legal. 100%. Nowitzki needs to be careful if not hunting down the elusive counter striker. If you do that, that could be exactly what Yanis Gamori wants him to do. wonder after a multitude of push kicks and a really jarring kick to the knee. How compromised Nowitzki could nope. potentially be. Oh, he walked him a little bit. He had him with wobbly legs. And a flying knee parlayed into a takedown from Gamori. Potential triangle coming. Potential Omoplata coming. Potential Gogo Plata coming. Oh, yep, there it is. Trying to work for a Gogo Plata. How cool would that have been? And back up to standing. Nowitzki does a great job of getting back to his feet. Fantastic job from Gamori. Could be trying to hit the triangle from here. Thundering elbows to the body. Belarusian crowd going wild here. Don't think he quite has the arm in that triangle. As you said, more of a head scissor. Could be trying to... Potential here for a Von Flu choke if Gamori's wise to it. Nowitzki needs to let go of that neck. 
Gamori not really trying to work for the Von Fluchuk. Von Fluchuk, of course, he would be jamming his shoulder into the carotid artery of his opponent. Gamori didn't feel it. threatened by that, that headlock, by that guillotine attempt. He was just riding it out. It's absolutely a legitimate approach to it. And I think Gamori just taking a little bit of time to reset, to recalibrate. He was on wobbly legs at a stage there. Nabisky showing great flexibility, trying to get back to his feet, denied by Gamori. Novitsky looking for that high guard, maybe trying for a rubber guard again. Potential for an arm bar. Bar coming. Oh, beautiful elbow then from Gamori right down the middle. Very, very good fight. Brave Nation, absolutely beautiful example of risk and reward. When you open up those feet in order to go for something, it does, you can no longer control your opponent's head. He's free to throw an elbow to your face, and he probably will. Final seconds of the second round here. And again, a very interesting and difficult fight to score. You had the shot come in from the bits of the wobble with the moment, but the morning highlight back into a takedown and finished the round in the top. Very difficult for I'm calling this one two rounds for Davinsky, but I could absolutely be arguing. I could absolutely with this to an argument that it's two rounds the other way as well. As you said, Bill, very close fight thus far. I do think this third and final round could be telling. A lot of respect in the Brave Combat Federation cage. <laughs> Phil, the shots are getting harder and heavier. These two have taken the full measure of each other. They've learned as much about their opponent's speed, timing, technique, reflexes as they are going to. And they're starting to turn it on. Another nice sidekick from Gamori. And with the fight being so close, Carrick, both these fighters can't really afford to go to the judges. They have each been told by their corner, start to turn it up, son, and they are. Big takedown from Gomori, the, the former K1 national French champion with the takedown. Now, if anything, that tells you just how dangerous he thinks the striking of Nowitzki is. It also illustrates the, the, the brilliance of mixed martial arts. You can, even if your jiu-jitsu is not phenomenal, if you land some clean shots first, all of a sudden your black belt opponent is a brown belt. If you can hit twice, a purple belt. And the same thing with wrestling. You may not be the greatest wrestler in the world, but if you can get your opponent to stand up and start to trade with you, boom, you can put him on his back. Gamori again, just taking the opportunity to, to recalibrate, to reset. Novitski does have a foot on the cage, may use that to try and wall walk. This is a wise strategy that we're seeing on top from Giannis Gamori. He knows when you're on top, as long as you stay busy, the judges see you as being ahead. If he does something crazy, postures way back, tries to land a knockout elbow, his opponent might well escape. He's riding his opponent, throwing shots as necessary to stay there. Hoping his opponent makes a mistake, he can quickly take advantage of and end the fight. Gamori, of course, a fantastic striker, but statistically has finished most of his fights by submission. Does have an arm bar, an arm triangle, a guillotine, and a triangle in his locker. So does have that diversity of submissions. This is a little bit of a, these are two wild fighters. You've got a, a K1 fighter that loves to choke people. 
And you've got a, a submission master who loves to knock people out. As we said, Novitsky, a, a Belarusian national champion in no-gi grappling and combat sambo, but that has seven wins by way of KO or TKO. Referee may be looking at a stand-up fairly soon. Gamoy lands a strike and dives right back into the guard. Transitioning to the half guard, may try and sneak that knee through for side control. Novitski has that overhook, just trying to immobilize that arm of Gamoy so he can't be hit with it. Closed guard is purely a defensive posture. Starting to flat back a little bit is Novitski. Oh, big elbow followed by hellacious ground and pound, but needs to be wary of the triangle and the submission threat. Novitski needs to open those feet, start to try and make something happen. Closed guard is a purely defensive posture. This is not a sport that rewards that. Just under 90 seconds left in the third and final round. And right now, dominance from Gamori in the top position. The Belarusian crowd getting behind the man. He's trying to get that elevator sweep. Trying to use that butterfly hook to switch and turn. It's bound to be frustrating if you're Novitski right now. You're thinking to yourself, what do I need to do to get this man off me? Whereas Gomori is doing just enough to keep himself honest. First thing he's got to do, Phil, open those feet, maybe try a hip bump, use that sweep to try and affect a stand up. Big elbows again from Gomori. It's always going to be difficult to mount any kind of striking offense off your back if you're Novitski. It is used to significant extent sometimes, but gravity is the thing. Things dropping down harder you than things that fly up from bottom. Nice work from Gamori to seamlessly transition into the side control. Novinsky, to his credit, keeps working. Short time now, Brave Nation, 10 seconds. Needs to be wary, another reverse triangle. Is it Crowd is going bit? crazy in. Oh, and it's just time. A, just a little bit too late there from the Vicky, but the second reverse triangle we saw tonight. And this is where I need to get the interpretation of the fight from our three ringside judges. Phil, interesting is the word I am sitting here. My mind is racing, trying to determine, trying to guess, really. Which way the judges saw it. I did, I did absolutely like the Desert Warrior in the third round. The other two, as I said, I thought they went yellow's way, but I, I would not disagree if somebody argued. Runs one, two, and three, with two close for me to call. Obviously, the third line due to the wrestling, I bet you take that right to me, but one, I'll tell you, as you said, you're in the fight, you can make an argument for either one of the best.
All right, Brave Nation, let's give a big round of applause for both warriors bringing it in the Brave CF51 cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 29-28, red corner. Your second judge scores about 29-28, blue corner. And your third judge, Scores about 29-28 for a split decision victory. Out of the blue corner, Yanis, the Desert Warrior, Gabori! Beautiful sportsmanship shown there. Members of Brave Nation, ordinarily, most people hate split decisions. I'm actually one of the few fans of them. I can make a great argument for this bout is sponsored by Brave Energy Drink. Only the best to power your best effort. Fortune favors the brave. The brightest young star in MMA today, Muhammad Mokayev returns to action as he takes on Ibrahim Nabruza, one of Georgia's finest warriors and a national champion in his home country. Coming up next, Muhammad the Punisher Mokayev faces Ibrahim Navruzov in a catchweight bout of 59 kilograms. All right, Brave Nation, we've got a treat for you in this next battle on our historic night. And we'd like to thank our partners, RSM, for helping us put on an amazing show right here in Minsk, Belarus. All right, here we go, Brave Nation. This is a three five-minute rounds in a catchweight bout of 59 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and one draw. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 58.9 kilograms. Representing Warrior Tbilisi Jim and fighting out of Tbilisi, Georgia. Please welcome Ibrahim Nabruzha! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of five wins and no losses. This is after an amateur career of 23 wins and no losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 58.5 kilograms. Representing Team KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of Manchester, England by way of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Please welcome Mohammed the Punisher. Mo KHK Team Bahrain in, in the house. Milayakov. Tale of the tape. Ibrahim Navruzov, the elder by seven years. Mohamed Mokayev enjoys a little bit of a height advantage. These fighters did not take their eyes off one another during the introductions. The intensity and hype in this building. Tension is palpable. Here we go. One of those pin drop moments there is a palpable intensity. Mokayev not just a dominant wrestler, but also has some serious hands. And a bit of an overextension there from Navruzov. Both these men very wide stances. Mokayev just shifting the hips, letting his opponent know that should he choose to, there's a kick in the chamber. He's going to pull the trigger first. and He's shifting those hips, Phil, to try and see what reaction he gets from his opponent. His opponent is not, in fact, circling away from him. He may fire that kick off in very short order. There it was. Just skims the leg of Navruzov with the kick, does Mohamed Mokayev. That kick was just a little bit low, but entirely unintentional. No harm, no foul. 
Well, so far, Navrizov hasn't quite found the mark with that one, too. He's tried a couple of times. Watching the Punisher on tape and fighting the Punisher are very different things. Has been perfect so far in his mixed martial arts career. His last fight was a fantastic test for him against a fellow IMAF world champion in Abdul Hussein. He won that fight via unanimous decision back at Brave 49. And that was the type of fight character that really showed just how class and act Mohamed Mokayev is. And how deep his heart is. He had to dig down for that one. And it was there for him. Ruzov employing smart movement. Doesn't want to be a static target for someone like Mohamed Mokayev. Nice kick right up the middle from Mo. One to the body, one to the leg. Probably one coming up to the head before too long. Ooh. We heard the noise of that one again, oh. entirely unintentional. It did make one heck of a noise. That's one of those kicks that it's that it's a dull thud of a kick, and usually the duller the thud of a kick, you know that it landed square on the cup. Now, Vruzov has up to five minutes in order to recover. Looks like he's a little bit ticked off at his opponent. We need to see a replay of that to see just how much force it landed with. Here, we've got our Green Hill replay, and there it was. Again, not entirely conclusive. May need to see that in uh, super slow motion. But a kick to the groin, it's, it's, it's like a car crash, you know, you, you shouldn't be watching it, but you feel like you have to. You can't take the eyes away from it. But as you say, a full five minutes to recover. One of the things, Phil, that I advocate for in this sport is a protective cup made out of metal. That's the standard Muay Thai. The Thai fighters actually traditionally used coconut shells uh, tied on with rope. We, of course, now have more modern technology. Every, but most people, the majority of people, wear plastic. But that metal cup from Thailand is absolutely the way to go in the sport because accidental low blows like this do happen. Mokayev does not look impressed. I think he's intimating that there's perhaps a little bit of gamesmanship going on on the part of Navruzov here. If we could, I'd like to see that again. Just. Maybe slow down a little bit to see how conclusive that shot was. Now, Vruzov has now run through perhaps half the time he has available to him. If he feels like he's unable to continue and the ringside official and the referee agrees that he's unable to continue, then we would likely go to a no contest because that was in, I believe everybody agrees, an accidental low kick. Yeah, it was, it was more so the, the, the movement of Ibrahim moving backwards, um, Mokayev moving forwards, completely unintentional, as you say. Mogaev keeping nice and loose in the cage. As far as he's concerned, this fight is still a go. Mavruzov being attended to by our cage side physicians. Mogaev in the neutral corner, no coaching allowed in situations such as these. Mavruzov did briefly, it appeared, try to stand up onto his feet. Did not complete that. Obviously, if you can't stand, you can't fight. But my sovereign hope is that he is able to stand in very short order. And here we're getting a look at that low kick. And it was low. Yeah, the the laces of the foot. If we were talking about football, it was kind of slapped into that area. And you can see the instant reaction. And you can see the disdainful look on the face of Mohamed Mokayev when it landed. 
Brave Nation, the, as, as we'd said, these blows do not happen by accident. A foot is low, it's on the ground by definition. In order to get it above the waist, it has to pass through that groin region. And sometimes both fighters' footworks don't, don't meld quite right. The kick does not go where you intended it to go, and it does hit low. It's one of my least favorite parts about this sport, but it does happen. And things always look a little bit worse and a little bit dramatic in super slow motion. So. I think the referee just called the fight off. I think the, ref, the referee made the signal, the, the X signal. Brave Nation, it appears that our referee has determined the fighter, after a five minute rest period, has determined that the fighter cannot go on. If that is the case, and the referee believes that that kick was unintentional, the, the bout over. will be declared a no contest. That's it. And I hope we have a rematch. That's it. accidental strike to the groin and the fighter unable to continue this bout is declared a no contest there you have it officially a no contest and that's not how anybody wanted the fight to end up i would try and get this fight booked again as quick as possible these two fighters now have a score to settle you could see the disappointment in Mohamed Mokaev's face when he realized the fight was called off. But these things happen in mixed martial arts. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Roman Bogatov is eager to edge one step closer to a world title shot. As he takes on fellow Russian, Abdul Mutalib Gyrbekov, who's riding a 13 fight undefeated streak. Coming up next, Roman Bogatov faces off against Abdul Mutalib White Wolf Gyrbekov. 
All right, Brave Nation, let's welcome our next Warriors. Into the Brave CF 51, the future is here cage, along with RSM. This next battle is three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins, two losses, and one draw. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66.2 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of Dagestan, Russia. Please welcome Abdul Muttalib, White Wolf, Dayan Pekov. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and one loss. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66.2 kilograms. Representing Spartak, Novos, Troisk, and MTM team and fighting out of Russia, please welcome Roman Bogdan! Your referee is Andre Pivovarov. White Wolf in black, red, Roman Bogatov in white and red. It'll be interesting to see if either man attempts an early takedown just to impose themselves upon the fight. Both these guys, incredible winning pedigree. As I say, Roman Bogatov never been finished in his career. Oh. Beautiful shot from Gair Bekov. Both these men have the cardio to put a pace on one another for three full rounds, Kirk. Absolutely incredible, Phil, to see a wrestling-based fighter like this using Taekwondo kicking techniques. Nice work finishing with the leg kick. That's right, a little bit of Dutch kickboxing now, and a lot of bit of scream. Guy here, Begov, is pumped up for this fight. Yeah, they're not range finding kicks, Kerik. He's trying to, to land on the mark and hurt his opponent right off the bat. He's decided that, that feeling out period is not necessary. Maybe from watching tape, maybe because his heart's so big. He thinks he knows how to take it to the fighter, and he's doing it. Geyer Begov charging forward, trying the jumping knee. Oh, big shot. Big shot to the melon. That was huge, right over the top. Beautiful shift, ending up with a beautiful low kick. Everything Geyer Begov is throwing is with bad intentions here. Bogatov has yet to offer any kind of offense. This is a highly unusual way to start a fight. Bogatov may be just a little bit surprised. This is not the beginning to the fight he was expecting. As you say, absolutely no feeling out process whatsoever. Geir Bekov continuing to scream at his opponent. Further, Phil, Geir Bekov's attacks are so unusual. It's going to take a while to get used to him, even if they were feeling each other out a little bit. Throwing at 30%, throwing at 40%, it would oh. take a while. At 100%, I don't know if you can ever get used to this kind of an attack. That's not so much landing the leg kick as kicking through the opponent. So powerful, so compact, years of wrestling. There's only so many of those leg kicks that Bogatov will be able to take. Again, that crushing leg kick just whipping right through. Kair Bekov bringing it in the Brave Combat Federation cage. Bang. That's a beautiful shot to right the down the middle. Followed up to the legs, he's screaming for more. Forces Bogatov into the shot. Beautiful defense there from Geyer Begov trying to raise that level of Bogatov up. Roman Bogatov still in on those hips. And that wasn't so much Bogatov making the choice to shoot. He was forced into doing so. 
on the offensive striking. Phil, oh, it, it was a wise choice on his behalf. He needs to latch onto that leg and not let go because he is not winning standing. Big takedown from Geyer Bekov, or from Bogatov, my mistake. But Geyer Bekov right in front of his corner. You can see Brave Combat Federation, super lightweight champion Eldar Eldorov in his corner. We want to wish Eldar a very happy birthday. It was his 30th birthday yesterday. And what a selfless coach he is. That illustrates that he's coming here to corner his fighters, traveling over his birthday, come here to corner his fighters because that's how much he cares about the, the fighters under his tutelage. He is a fighter's fighter and absolutely the heart and soul of KHK Team Bahrain. Bogatov doing a good job now just to control the hips of his opponent and prevent him from getting up. Trying to shell for those legs, making it nearly impossible for Geyer Bekov to get up. We need to see some offense from Bogatov. Takedowns used to count for a lot under the unified rules of mixed martial arts. They don't so much anymore. You need to take your opponent down and do something with it. Could be looking at a stand up here. Not a lot of activity going on. Geyer Bekov looks like he's trying to creep in for a guillotine. But again, it's very hard to get the leverage. Nice Ogutop, pass in the Ogutop side control. has passed. Regard from bottom. Very big, very, very beginning. Some, stri some strikes from top. That's if there is a, a takedown in the second round. That's what we need to see more of and a lot more of. You have to ask the question again. It's a wonderful offensive strike. Their bank off one draws to take down. Helps to take down. It's very highly effective. Absolutely cannot wait to see what Gayerbakov comes out with in the opening of round two. I was loving that kicking game. He was really, really throwing those kicks in. It was almost like a Dutch Muay Thai style, wasn't it? Little elements of Dutch Muay Thai, little elements, or Dutch kickboxing more properly, little elements of Taekwondo, and some kitchen sink attacks. <laughs> Bogatov implementing a little bit more movement than he did last time. Gayerbakov, we may see go down to the body. Oh, here's it! Oh, oh, he the chin! chin. Oh, he rocked him down on the ground! Absolutely huge spin and backfish. Used the momentum of his opponent, and could he become the first man to finish Roman Bogatov in his professional career? Now, this is what you want to do when you're on top in mixed martial arts. This is just an absolute frenzy of violence. Bogatov does a good job to try and get up, but Gaia Bekov brings him right back down. Butt drag there, a little bit of an ambiguous situation, not clear who's going to get the takedown, who's going to end up on top. If anything, that just shows how well conditioned Roman Bogatov is that he was able to recover from a clean shot like that. Absolutely. That is the amazing thing, though, about headshots. They're effective for about five or ten seconds. If you've got the conditioning and the heart and the will and the strong neck to make it through that five or ten seconds, you're back to normal. You're fine. Body shots, on the other hand, are cumulative. And I think we were going to see Gair Bekov start going to the body because if you throw shots to the body, it's much harder to level change and get in there. If it goes back up to standing, I do think we are going to see Abdul Mutalip start punching to the body. 
Roman Bogatov needs to get that leg free and try and shoot it behind himself. A little bit of a 50-50 position going on here. We may see Bogatov try and work up to a knee and then get back to his feet, but as we know, Geyerbekov is absolutely relentless with his wrestling. Tried the victory roll. Stalking is Geyerbekov. I've said it at nauseum, but everything he's throwing is with hellacious intent. Phil, this fighter is nasty, and I say that with the highest respect. Bogatov no longer a grounded opponent. Knees to the head, perfectly legal from this position. There it is. Nice little pot shot up the top from Roman Bogatov in the middle there. Almost like Bogatov has decided just to throw caution to the wind and happily engage. Oh, he rocked him with a good shot there. Bogatov shakes it off. Shakes it off and calls his opponent in. Geyerbakov, happy to oblige. Exchange of front kicks. Big swing and a mess from Roman Bogatov. And Bogatov jab was on the mark. Spinning hammer fist. Missed, but barely. Bogatov in on his own takedown this time. That head is in the middle and being stuffed. He's more so in the shape of a question mark right now than he is anything else. But still successful with the takedown. That feel is power. Head popped out. Geyerbekov trying to land a little bit of shots from the bottom position. Bogatov just wearing his weight on his opponent now, forcing them. Bogatov out of the trip again. Texas opponent time. I mean, surely this is the blueprint now for Bogutov. Strike to take down and try and dominate from that position because so far he's been rocked twice by Geyer Beko. It absolutely is, Phil, and he's starting to be more aggressive on top. Oh, back You can take. see more aggressive with his positioning and a lot more aggressive with his punches. No hits in. Geyer Beko slowly getting back to his feet. Both of these guys incredibly tough, so evenly matched. Fantastic back and forth fight, round for round now. Lovely wrestling from Roman Bogatov. Although Geyer Bekov looked like he was slowly trying to get in on a single of his own, almost sneakily. He's holding on to his... A bit of unusual technique here. Short time now, Brave Nation, 10 seconds. Geyer Bekov again, I'm gonna take a good strong big knee. This third round will really come down to who wants it more. 
I believe Gairbekov put out just a little bit too much in the first. Bogatov just a little too much in the second. Interesting to see who recovers. Gairbekov takes the back. Bogatov momentarily thought about trying to roll for a knee bar. Gairbekov was wise to it, scoot at the hips back. Switch attempt, not successful so far. It's a lot of blood coming out of the nose of Gairbekov. Been so much action in this fight, it could have come from anywhere. These wrestling exchanges are absolutely wonderful to watch. This is world-class fighting. Bogatov gets back to his feet. Geyer Bekov Maybe still the on the back. Trying to break that grip as Bogatov, but it's vice-like from Geyer Bekov. Geyer Bekov wants to be just a teeny bit more aggressive from back. Throw some knees. A little bit of a slip, a little bit of a takedown. Both these guys, great representatives of Russian MMA, great representatives of global mixed martial arts inside the Brave Arena. And again, what a showcase for the type of talent we have in Brave Combat Federation, Kirk. Absolutely, putting this into the greater context of the sport. Sport, of course, was conceived in Brazil. Best fighters came from there, then America got involved. Japan was up there for a while, and now we are seeing Russia in ascension. But now Bogatov manages to transition in the top position with three, just over three minutes left to work in the third and final round, Kirk. Shelves the legs beautifully there, immobilizing the hips of his opponent. It's a little bit of a cut on the top of the head of Bogatov, or that might actually just be the blood of Gerbekov on him. Like Shakespeare wrote, for he that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Little leverage being sought. Elbow may follow shortly. There's blood coming out of one of the fighters. I can't quite see who's cut. I think it might be Bogatov somewhere. Just implementing that smothering wrestling style, not giving Gerbekov any space with which to mount offense and get out. And very cleverly positioning the head where it cannot effectively be struck. Gerbekov needs to be careful here of giving his back. Bogatov trying to get wrist control. Bogatov pops his head out. He could take the back of Gerbekov here. He could. There it is. He is. He's now going to move up higher. Geyerbekov was willing to put himself in the bad position. One there. hook in, Phil. Now, Two hooks, hooks are in, Phil. What a switch and turn in favor this would be if Bogatov was able to get the finish win. Absolutely fantastic show of heart from Roman Bogatov. Survived an unbelievable onslaught in round one. Appears to be pulling ahead. Bogatov trying to land shots just so he has space to slip that arm underneath the chin of Geyerbekov for the rear naked choke. Geyerbekov defending. His defense right now is impregnable. Brave Nation, in order for Bogatov to complete that choke, he likely needs a little space between his hips and his opponents. Right now, that space is not available to him. He's not likely to be able to secure a finish from there. Both these guys just landing pot shots on one another with a minute left to go in the third and final round. That's more of a face bar, but he could get the submission from here. It's not clean underneath the chin. Gerbekov doing everything he can to fight the hands. What has Roman Bogatov got left in his arms? This is an absolutely incredible fight. Trying to switch to the body triangle now. Does Gerbekov have enough left in the tank for one last burst to turn into the guard of Bogatov? Brave Nation, these fighters are right above us. We could reach out and touch them. They are actually blasting each other some to the face, even from this rear position. And there, face crank attempt a second time. Down to short time, 10 seconds, Brave Nation. 
Both these guys seem happy just to punch one another in the face. Possible head on triangle, but what a fight! Round in! Absolutely fantastic fight by my count. The fight of the night. All my respect goes out to both of these fighters. Absolutely incredible fight. You had focus on any incredibly two waters. You had your bet on the striking offense. Give it up for both of these warriors on what very well could be the fight of the night. Incredible respect for both. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout 29-28 for your winner. Out of the red corner! Robert! This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Vadim Kutsi is ready to shake things up in the Brave CF Super Welterweight Division. When he meets Daniyar Abdibayev, another huge name coming out of Kyrgyzstan. Coming up next, Vadim Kutsi takes on Daniyar Domkrat Abdibayev. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our next warriors into the Brave CF 51 RSM cage. The future is here. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the super welterweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and two losses. He stands 100. 75 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.2 kilograms. Representing Team MTM and fighting out of Osgon, Kyrgyzstan. Please welcome Daniel Domkrat Abdipayel. And introducing his opponent. 
fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins and one loss. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.75 kilograms. Representing Academy MMA and fighting out of Minsk, Belarus. Give it up for Vadim Kate. Your referee is the big Decky Larkin. Kerrick, when you have a fight of this magnitude, you need the best in the business. That's why we have head of regulatory affairs, Decky Larkin, as our man in the middle. Vadim Kutsi perhaps could be called the, the more technical striker, and Daniel Adibayev loves to get in there and just get into a proper tear up. He certainly has earned that tire iron nickname. Ooh. Clear shot. Replied with same. Adibayev looks. Very loose, very flowy in there. Kutsi perhaps feeling the little bit of pressure being put on by the fact that he's fighting in front of his hometown crowd on such a big stage. Despite any pressure he may be under, he is starting to land some clean shots. He's really targeting that low leg. Trying to mobilize the calf of his opponent. Kutsi doing a really slick job of distance management. Oh, that was so smooth. Duck under to take the back. And you have Dibayev trying to break that grip. Oh, that is power! Huge takedown from Vadim Kutsi. And followed up immediately with strikes. This is what a takedown is supposed to look like in mixed martial arts. You don't take somebody down and blanket them, you Ooh. do that! You drop those knees that we can feel. Brave Nation, we are sitting cage side. We can feel those knees shake the chair I'm in. And there is an audible thud coming off those knees. Very smart work from Vadim Kutsi. <laughs> Try and soften up the legs, thus immobilizing your opponent. Move that little bit slower. He can't come in for the takedowns. All that blood kind of collects in the muscles then. Has one hook in. Rolls to second the hook. second hook. Has the back. Only two minutes in, we've got three minutes left. That's a long time to try and finalize this position. Lots of time for Vadim Kutsi to work here. Could transition to an arm bar, and a, you very rarely see a Phil Nelson in mixed martial arts. That's an uncomfortable neck crank. Usually see that more in wrestling. Highly unusual. It, it's very hard to get a submission from it, but it absolutely compromises the opponent's ability to breathe. When you jam that chin down into the chest, it's very, very tough to breathe fully. Very smart technique right here, forcing the opponent to not breathe properly. He's also putting pressure on the hips. Even dropped a heel into that thigh. This is absolutely the definition of misery sometimes referred to as the hurt lock. Why? Because it hurts, Kerrick. Again, Vadim Kutsi trying to work for that rear naked choke. Kutsi absolutely doing a fantastic job with those heels. As busy as he's been with his arms, it's as if his legs belong to a different person whose sole focus is keeping those heels in place. Because if he loses those heels for even a split second, he's got a crowbar on top of him trying to hit him. Nice little heel strikes to the inside of the thigh there from Vadim Kutsi. And you're Abdibayev doing a good job of defending the rear naked choke. Just as I say that, Kutsi scoots an arm underneath the chin. Needs to get his other arm free. Absolutely fantastic positioning from Kutsi. He's striking. He's actually throwing kicks. He's looking for a submission. At the same time, he's maintaining beautiful hip control. Does have seven wins by submission. Four of them by rear naked choke. Does seem to be a favorite of his. Down to one minute, Brave Nation. <laughs> uh, 
Abdibayev seems to have locked, wrapped those hands up a little bit. Becky Larkin just making sure no one's got any fingers inside their opponent's gloves. Kutsi happy to keep the pressure on his opponent. Throw the odd strike to the thigh like you saw right there. So that's heavy leg kicks. He landed some big knees to the thighs and now he's landing. He strikes to the inside of the leg. We have seen Adibayev fight before. The man is capable of taking tremendous damage. Very difficult to submit. Has never been submitted in his professional career. Does have two losses, one by way of KO and one by way of decision. So very hard to submit. Be a huge feather in the cap of Kutsi if he were to submit Adibayev. He's getting warmer, as they say in the kids' game. And that was it. Time ran out. Full three minutes of back control. Used it very effectively, I'd argue. Just gonna get another little look at it. around you and take you down. But then on the transverse of that, it was also very smart of Kutsi to attack the legs, which is going to impede upon the movement and compromise the movement of Abdibayev. Abdibayev is going to try and knock his opponent out. He didn't like having his back taken for that long, and that's the kind of shot you're going to see. Oh. Counter check here, there. That kick was checked very effectively. Earlier ones haven't, as you can see. Look at by the, the red, the welt on that calf area. Kutsi absolutely chopping into the legs of Abdibayev. Very interesting approach adopted. Very, very smart, high level MMA intellect being shown here by Kutsi. Kick thrown by Abdibayev, but checked by Kutsi. Checked and Kutsi was moving away. He's taking angles brilliantly when a shot does come in. He's fading from it. Even oh. if it hits him, not likely to put him out. Little bit of a wobble there by Abdibayev. That leg's compromised. Fully expect to see Kutsi really zeroing in on that now. Take the uppercut. One or two more leg kicks like that, and you could see Abdibayev go down. Brave Nation, that calf kick requires less power then does the thigh kick in order to stop somebody by kicking him in the thigh you have to use your shin so little power is required to stop somebody with a calf kick you can actually get away with using that foot it means you can be a little bit farther back a little bit harder to counter punch it is one of the major new techniques being employed widely in the sport you can see the movement of uh, Daniel Abdibayev has been somewhat compromised doesn't really have any pep on his step on that lead leg, and he's not even attempting to check these kicks, Kirik. That leg is near done. Just every time. Two more calf kicks, and they're coming. If, if, there was one. Every time Abdibayev puts pressure on that, he will feel searing heat, searing pain in that calf. There's a nerve that runs down there, Brave Nation. If you kick that nerve cleanly enough, the foot literally no longer works. This is a master class in calf kicking. As you say, Kurt, one more big kick to that. Oh! We've already got drop foot. Those toes can no longer effectively step off the ground. Once that front leg's compromised, it becomes extremely hard to set anybody up for a shot because in order to land your hardest shot, you have to put more weight on your front leg than mm -hmm. your back, and you can't without collapsing. And there's still half a round left for Kutsi to really focus in on that leg. Big 
Big over Hano, and they're flying me from Kutsi. Vadim Kutsi is an absolute savage. Trying to reverse the takedown now. Good heavy sprawl from Kutsi. Excellent use of leverage and core strength. Nice use of the wizard. Oh, big shot again by Vadim Kutsi. Pressed up against us here in our broadcast position. Good defense being shown here by Abdi Baev. Phil, one of my favorite things about Kutsi is whether, when they're in little scrambles, little situations where you don't know what's going to happen, you get an attack. Eagle Eye Deki Larkin saw Abdi Baev grab the cage and prove his position to. Lovely work from Deki Larkin. That's why he's one of the best in the business. Kutsi's going to go back to work on that leg. As far as that calf goes, that little timeout from the little lecture we got there does not affect it. Those calf kicks oh. hurt for a long, long time. That leg has doubled in size. As we say, not even one attempt to check the leg kick so far from Abdi Baev. Oh. Nice work from the hands from Vadim Kutsi. Kutsi's lining, instead of lining both of his feet straight across from his opponent's feet, he's moving towards his right. He's got an angle to kick in on that calf that really, unless you've got extraordinary hip flexibility, that, that there just isn't a check available. He's just enough off to the right, just offset enough. So that those are going to land unless you pop straight back, which I do believe is a very clever technique right now. The worst thing that Daniel Abdi Bayev can do now is sit down and beat in his best center and stay on the paper. All that's going to make it even more difficult for him once he gets up. Sitting down in the corner. Green Hill replay. Some of this incredible action that was. Strike could have ended it right there. Beautiful wizard defense. Well, hometown superhero by the Kutsi. Take the right and steps in. No warning about holding on to the fence. Take off. Kutsi took the key and released. Take the key and released. The body is given up before the mind here is as they come. Do. So far, his, 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 the reason that those kicks are landing so perfectly is because he's not standing directly in front of his opponent. He's standing just a little bit to the outside. That gives him a perfect angle. Plus, as I said, he's landing with a foot, and you can get away with it here. When you land with that foot, you're not within reach of your opponent's counters. It's an extremely safe, extremely deadly for your opponent form of attack in this sport. Might it be advantageous of Kutsi to, to work the hands a little bit more now that Abdi Baev is going to be worrying about the leg kicks? Yes and no. Absolutely. I do believe he's got some opportunities to land some shots there. But when your arm, when your fist touches your opponent, your opponent can touch you too. That is not the case with a calf kick. You can throw that calf kick from the outside where you are out of range of your opponent's punches. Oh. Kutsi must be thinking to himself, how many more times do I have to kick this guy? And the movement is so compromised right now. The answer to that question is as many times as he has to, and he's going to keep doing it. Adin Kutsi just shy with that leg kick. 
He's going to miss some of them because he's throwing them from the outside. It's completely worth it from his point of view to miss some and land some, but stay outside of those tire iron fists that are in front of him. And you have to give credit to Abdi Bayev. He's still in this fight. He's still coming forward. He's still trying to land that big overhand. He is absolutely a bad man, and you know what? Throws a lady out of his own. I'm gonna kick you in the calf too. And on the takedown. Abdi Bayev trying to get in on that single, being defended so far by Vadim Kutsi. Landing a couple of shots just to distract his opponent. Does Abdi Bayev have enough left in his legs? Does he can he generate that amount of strength? He can, yeah, because there's there's different kinds of strength. There's explosive strength, and there's what's fairly close to static strength, which is more what you use to slowly grind somebody down to the ground. You just can't ask him to bounce around on it right now. He does not have that bouncing capability. But does he have the ability to push a little bit? Yes, he does. Vadim Kutsi will be desperate to get a little bit of separation here so he can go back to pinging that leg. But he is actually landing some nasty shots of his own despite being pushed up against the fence. Of course, when your hips are against the fence, you can't get your hips behind those punches, but it does still hurt. You can hear the thud just happening in front of us here in our broadcast position of those hammer fists to the midsection. More stalling work here than anything from Abdi Bayev. Not really being offensive with it. If anything, it's Kutsi, he's being the most offensive here. It absolutely is. Despite this position against the fence, Kutsi is landing the better shots. Deki Larkin breaks it up. And it's calf kicking time. Abdi Bayev needs to, needs to change his angle just a little bit. He tried it. It's going to open his body up to punches, but he doesn't have a choice right now. He's got to switch that angle, face forward just a little bit more, so that lead foot oh. can name to the outside because he cannot take this. His left calf is twice the size of his right calf at the minute, Kurt. That's how bad the swelling is. It looks like it could pop. Brave Nation, this is not a matter of heart. This is a matter of physiology. When you get that level of, of swelling, that level of striking, the nerves simply don't work. You can't will nerves to work that don't work. Abdi Bayev is absolutely as bad as a man gets. This is a brave man, but that leg barely works anymore. And a couple more shots, it's not going to work at all. Nice counter hook there, nice check hook there from Vadim Kutsin. You know he's going to want that finish. Especially being right here in his hometown. Credit to Abdi Bayev, he's still trying to win this fight. But an absolute master class in the calf kicking game here from Vadim Kutsi. Abdi Bayev not just trying, he could. If Kutsi drops his defense for a split second, he's going to catch a big overhand right, and he will be slept. However, he is not. He has maintained 100% awareness of the danger that's in front of him. I kind of like these guys calling the, end, <laughs> calling the end of the round on their own. They're like, hey, we work pretty hard. Great show, respect, and an incredible display. Kutsi almost looks a little bit disappointed with himself that they get the finish after a masterful performance like that. I absolutely think he did the right thing. He was facing a guy they called Crowbar for a real good reason. He decided not to fully commit. He decided to keep himself in a position where he can deliver a huge amount of damage and the scene done, and that's exactly what he did. As you said, so it was a masterful example of mixed martial arts.
Nation, another incredible war inside the Brave 51 RSM cage. Let's give it up for both of these warriors. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout a unanimous decision victory for our hometown hero, Vadim Kutsev! This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Ilias Jeroen is eager to continue his road towards the top of the heat at lightweight when he takes on Sam Patterson, who is looking to earn his third straight victory. Coming up next, Ilias Brawley Jeroen faces Sam the future Patterson in a lightweight bout. Patterson fighting out of London, England, representing Team Crossface with a record of six, one and one. Elias Giroud, France, Marseille Fight Club, Maccabi Nice, Boxing Squad, leader and top team. 18 wins, six losses. I believe I show up, I can beat him everywhere. I'd be on my A game. I believe anywhere this fight goes, I can win. You see my last fight? I don't have prediction because I have a lot of surprise for this fight. I just do me, you know, like uh, if you watch my last fights, I've, I've got sharp boxing, I've got submissions, um, it's a 50-50, you know, I go either way. Um, I believe I do what I do, I show up, I'm sharp, his boxing, his submissions, won't matter. The top quality of San Patron is, is tall. And uh, for this preparation, uh, I take a uh, tall kickboxer, more heavy than Sam Patterson. But for prepare this fight, I need to, uh, to, to fight a tall guy and uh, foresee the, what, where is the key. I believe my advantage is I know how to use my reach. And Yilias being sh a shorter opponent in general, even if I was uh, not 6'3 lightweight, you know, he's quite a short lightweight. Um, the range is definitely going to be a factor. It's just about using it in the fight. Sam Patterson, good luck for you. I hope you do good preparation, good training camp, because me, I'm ready for war. I look forward to testing myself against him. All right, Brave Nation, three fights remain in this historic event as Brave Combat Federation partners with Rook Sport Management to make history and show to the world the heart and soul of the Belarusian warrior. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins, one loss, and one draw. He stands 193 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.25 kilograms. Representing Team Crossface and fighting out of Watford, England. Please welcome Sam, the future Patterson. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 19 wins and six losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.6 kilograms. Representing boxing squad and Bulgarian top team and fighting out of Marseille, France. Please welcome Elias Broly John. Your referee is Ale Milayakov. 
quick tail of the tape, Elias Jorun, four years the older, but look at the height discrepancy. How Sam Patterson makes 70 kilos, how he makes that lightweight limit is beyond me. It defies the laws of physics. Very slick from the future, moving in a circle, fainting the whole time. It's exactly what we expected. Sam Parsons going to do everything he can to keep Elias Jorun at the end of those go-go gadget arms. That front snap kick to the face goes halfway across this Brave Combat Federation cage, and it's a big cage. And it's not just that Sam Parson is the longer fighter, it's that he is so apt and so adept at using that range intelligently. He can keep, he's able to hit Elias Jorun without Jorun being able to hit him. Absolutely. It is the most over, distance management is the most over, look at that kick, it's the most overlooked factor in this sport. If you can hold the opponent where you want him, on the ends of your fist and you're the taller fighter, or inside those fists, if you're the shorter fighter, you very often can get the win and people can't even quite tell why it's happening. Sometimes you forget just how young Sam Patterson is in his mixed martial arts career. This is only his ninth fight, 25 years old, and so calm and composed in there, fighting a veteran like Elias Jun. This, of course, is the 25th fight in the career of Elias Jarun Kirik. Serious, serious knowledge, veteran savvy too. Goes up top with a head kick. That was impressive. Jarun's hand is just, that left hand is just a little bit low. I like that Sam's taking his time. He's not trying to rush anything. He's not trying to force the action. He's waiting for an opportunity to prevent, uh, present itself and then capitalize. Those kicks to the forearm can actually be nasty. Even though they're, they're quote unquote blocked, they can cause some damage. You can break an arm. You can break an it arm covering up with your, uh, your forearms. Sam Parson trying to work that jab. Slowly closes the distance. That's what we thought was going to happen. Took Elias about two minutes. He got to exactly where he wants to be. Not only is he close to his opponent, but he's on his opponent's back where there are really no significant striking opportunities available. Parson trying to do everything he can to turn into his opponent. Broomstick takedown, attempted, failed. Got a little somewhere with it. May try it a second time. Nice work from Sam Parson to break the grip with that Kimura. Elias doing exactly what he wants to do. No separation, no back to standing on the outside and getting blasted. He's staying in close where he does appear to potentially have an advantage to some degree, but they are going back and forth. This, what you're seeing right here, Brave Nation, is one of the great tests of strength in this sport. Who can put who's back on that fence and hold it there? That's exactly what Sam Patterson wants, a little bit of separation. Bound to be good for the confidence of Elias Jurin, knowing that he can close the distance and get his hands on Sam Patterson. Elias playing a very smart fight right now, not committing to anything where he can get countered hard, trying to get a sense how quick is how quick is the future right now? What's what are his reflexes like? Because you can watch tape all day, you can watch it for months, and you still don't know what the other man has because it changes day to day. Maybe he's got a sore foot. Maybe he didn't sleep well. Maybe he's jet lagged, and everything's a little bit different than what it was when he was on tape. You have to download that real information right now. That's what Broly's doing. Stalking Sam Patterson, trying to pressure him up against the cage. Patterson did a good job implementing beautiful lateral movement. He gets caught with a shot for the body and then over the top. Double underhooks here for Elias Jorun. May try a trip takedown, try and pop Sam off the cage, get the trip. Fantastic work landing in the half guard and this is where Elias Jorun does some of his best work. As we said, 10 wins by submission, eight by guillotine, one armbar and one Kimura. Thirty seconds left to get some work in. Is that enough time to try and work something in, Kirik? Depends how close to a submission he gets. If he gets very close, yes. If he simply rides, no. Little shot to the body. A little bit more of that can go a long way. 
Sam Patterson doing everything he can to try and turn in. He's on the hip. He's doing everything he needs to, but you cannot let a man like Ilyas Jarou take your back. There's a hook. And there's a hook. Both hooks in, but maybe just a little too late for Elias Jaron. That is going to be the story of the fight. I think the Trump has to let him win that struggle. I think he's trying to win that struggle. He's probably trying to close the distance. He's getting under him. He's getting the same kind of work for himself. I agree, Phil. Foley has a clear path to victory here. He's got to think, think, think the outside, get a reaction, actually throw something, hope he doesn't get countered. Get in close and then try and take it down to the ground. Once he's on the ground, he's very, very dominant. after what was a little bit of a cagey opening in the first round. Sam opening up a little bit more with the striking. Does have a piston of a straight right hand if he uncorks that. Patterson may throw that right hand a little bit lower than he might ordinarily. Trying to get through the defense there of Elias Jun. Oh, Sam gets caught from a shot. This is exactly where E.S. Jones wants this fight. It's what worked for him in round one. Throw a combination, put two, three punches together. You may get countered, you might not, but then you're in close where your opponent is no longer taller than you, but the future turned it around, separated again. Nice bicep work there, bicep control from Sam Patterson just to pivot out of the way. Yes, Jeroen trying to go up top with that head kick, and he's landing over the top a couple of times now. The problem is, who do you find to spar in the gym that can mimic this style? Sure, there's guys who are six foot three inches tall, but they don't move like this. There's guys who move like this, but they're closer to five foot nothing. Looks like there may be a little attempt at a ghillie setup. Absolutely not. We got a left wizard. Sam Patterson, of course, very, very apt at the submission game himself. His three submission wins all by way of guillotine. Does catch him quite a bit off the injury from his opponent. Right in front of us here in our broadcast position. Sam Patterson with a lovely little shoulder bump a la Conor McGregor. Patterson showing that despite not having an Arnold Schwarzenegger build, he has a tremendous amount of power in his body. He is now forcing the shorter fighters back up against the fence reversed now. We may see it. another reversal, a second reversal before there's a takedown. Yes, Jarun has the hands connected, has the double underhooks. Good balance from Sam Patterson. Really trying to pull down on that wizard to defend the takedown. Pops right back up. And very wisely throws a few little overhand shots. If your opponent is in on your body and pushing you around, but you can throw a few shots back, it can go a long way in the judges' scorecards. Sam Patterson now in top position inside the guard of Elias Joan. How dangerous is the guard of Joan? Patterson trying to step over into the half guard position. He does, of course, always have the option, if he can clear his head, of simply backing out of there. Elias Jarun does have one butterfly on the left side. Abandons it and reclaims full guard. Trying to hit a little bump sweep up on that shoulder. Sam Patterson doing the right thing by taking that frame away. So smart. And he's got that wrist trapped. He's going to get a couple of free shots into the head before there's an escape. I'd like to see Sam try and land those elbows. Him being so long and 
Skinny, those elbows are bound to be super sharp. Yes, you're doing a good job of just breaking down the posture of Sam Patterson right now. Using the legs to pull him in to reach up and grab then. As double underhooks and is happy just probably to hold Sam Patterson here and try and force a stand up. I have such respect for Groly's Broly's ground game. I'd actually like to see him try and fully commit to a sweep. Maybe look to take an arm. It is high, high risk, high reward. But as I said, I'm saying it out of respect. Less than a minute to go in the second round here. Again, a very close, cagey affair. Both these guys are so well-rounded and have so much respect for one another's skills. Patterson needs to watch the up kick. Jerome pops right back up momentarily. I thought we were going to see Sam Patterson get in on a guillotine there. Just happy to land those pinpoint knees. Momentarily, Jerome thought about the throw. And another very close round, Kerry. Do you think Sam perhaps edged it ever so slightly with that top control? The second half of a round <coughs> statistically counts more in the judges on the judges' scorecards than does the first half. Uh, I think that that could well have gone to Sam Patterson, but I'm not arguing now. Combat Federation 51. We are live from Minsk, Belarus. We are edging closer to Komian and main event time. Big shot from Broly. Barely slipped by the future. I'd like to see Sam really start to pop that jab. Just fired off a, a right hand right down the middle. Wasn't far away. Patterson feels like he's got this fight figured out. He feels like he can protect himself from bottom. He can probably stop from getting taken down. He's starting to show more and more comfort taking pot shots from the outside. Oh, nice Sam Patterson again with the take down. Evolution, baby. He lands right into the half guard position. Although that looks a little bit more like a half mount than anything else. Yes, Jerome clamping down on that leg. Patterson's long enough that if he wanted to, his limbs are that long, he could try and work for a crucifix from the half guard position. He seems to have an arm isolated just as I say that. He attempts, but Ilyas Jerome trying to get in on a leg here, trying to hit the heel hook. Heel hooks there. That's Patterson doesn't feel like he's in any danger. With the leg that straight, there's ankle danger, but nothing to the knee, and it's the knee you really need to worry about. Very impressive job by Patterson, staying on top in that scramble. Sam needs to be careful here. Yes, you're an obviously a, a guillotine specialist. And Sam inside the open guard right now of Ilyas Turun. Phil, I'm a little worried for Patterson, but he does not appear to be worried for himself. I think he thinks he's got this ground game figured out. Yes, Jeroen loops round four. 
the neck. Armen Guillotine, he has one of the tightest squeezes in mixed martial arts. Eight wins by way of Guillotine. He's really popping into that. Beat Mikhazyev with the exact same submission. Has it mounted now? This could There's be huge. There's a lot of pressure. There is a huge, the ribs are forcing the head up. He's pushing, the future is now pushing his head back in, taking the pressure off of the throat, and he survives. That is wonderful defense from Sam Patterson, but right now he finds himself mounted by Ilyas Jarun. What can Sam Patterson offer in the way of defense here while he is mounted? Jeroen's got some choices to make right now. Does he want to try and land some big shots from the top? Maybe open his opponent up with an elbow, or is he going to look for the submission? The submission is, of course, a longer shot than landing some clean punches. Sam Parson does a great job to get to half guard, then to full guard. Very, very intelligent work from the young man. Somebody give that man a brown belt. Oh, the transition's beautifully nice. He's on top. Wasn't kidding the least when I said somebody give that man a brown belt. That's what I'm looking at. One of the few men to get out of a guillotine from Ilyas Jorun. The amount of people that have fallen victim to that. Uh, Sam Patterson in the top position with 90 seconds left. We've talked about it repeatedly, but what we're seeing here is rapid evolution of a fighter from a striker to an absolutely complete fighter who's gone and succeeded with multiple takedowns, sweeps, Probably going to look for a submission of his own before too long. <laughs> Referee decides to stand them up. Good stand up, in my opinion. A little bit bruising on the eye of Jerome. Ilias needs to turn it up now. Then it left and Patterson nice and loose with his striking. Patterson showing very good cage generalship right now. Time for Ilias to take some risks. Beautiful attack. Great footwork by Sam Patterson to get out of the way of that. The thing I really enjoy about Sam Patterson is there's very little wasted energy, very efficient with his output. Back take. Jerome takes the bike, tries to get a hook in. Sam Patterson breaks the grip. Fantastic. Patterson's got the underhook. Over under position. They look for a little bit of separation here, fire off a couple of shots. Spinning hook kick for good measure. Jump knee coming. And time. Three lines in the book. Here it is. Fighters.
Brave Nation, another epic battle inside the Brave RSM 51 cage. After three great rounds, we go the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scored about 30-27, and your next judges scored about 29-28 and 29-28 for your winner. Out of the blue corner, Sam, the future, Patterson. Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave. It's more than a gym. Denise Magir is looking forward to making his international debut in front of his home crowd. When he faces Renat Sagintai, eager to earn his 10th professional win in as many bouts. Coming up next, a duel of undefeated stars as Denise Magir takes on Renat Kaiser Sagintai. All right, Brave Nation, this is the Brave Combat Federation 51 and RSM Cage Cup main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our next warriors in the co-main event into the Brave CF 51 Cage. The future is here. All right, Brave Nation, this is the Brave Combat Federation 51 and Rook Sport Management. Co main event of the evening! This next battle is three five minute rounds in the Super Welterweight Division. Introducing your first warrior, Fighter! Out of the blue corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of nine wins and no losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 79.6 kilograms. Representing Underdog and Turan Jim and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Please welcome Renat Kaiser. So. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of seven wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 79.45 kilograms. Representing Phoenix team and fighting out of Minsk, Belarus. Give it up for our hometown hero. Denise Martin. Your referee is the bad Decky Larkin. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, who does it better than Carlos Kramer? In a word, no one. Having a look at the tail of the tape here. Dennis Meyer, 26 years old. Sagantai, 24. Both these men undefeated. Seven and O versus nine and O. Both Mag these men light on the feet to start in and out. Mager feigning more with the hands. Sagantai a little bit more with his feet. Both these men just trying to get the measure of one another, not a punch thrown in anger yet. Just waiting for one of these guys to engage. As we say, incredible wealth of experience from Magar. Eight time Belarusian national hand to hand combat champion. He's the only man to have won that title so far. A little bit of a cagey affair here. Denise committed a little bit to that pendulum kick. May have learned something from it. May have seen his opponent lower his hands. May faint with that and come in with a single shot or even a combination over the top. If 
Very cagey so far, Carrick. Starting to have an effect with that pendulum kick. The three strikes that characteristically one starts off a fight, whether the jab off the front side, a left push kick, and that pendulum kick. They allow you to, with relative safety, start downloading information on your opponent's reflexes. How quickly does he respond? What type of fighter is he? Is he a counter fighter? Is he a runner? That information is now being downloaded by Mager. He's likely going to start capitalizing on it somewhere before the close of this round. Two minutes gone in the first round. A lot of data being downloaded by these fighters. Yet to really engage. That's probably the most engagement we've seen back and forth from the two of them. As we said, Sagantai 9 and 0. Oh. Nice body kick there from Maher. Switch to the liver. Sagantai not so much feeling his opponent out as simply moving forward, fainting, and then trying to land a big shot. Mager a little bit more measured in his approach. Majority of Maher's wins coming by way of submission. Four of them, two arm bars, one rear naked choke, and a front choke. Right now, happy to stand, content to throw the hands. It's always fun in a fight, Phil, to see the fighters start ramping it up. Oh, he gets the cut! Maher with an unbelievable uppercut, showing instant respect to his fallen opponent, quieting the crowd, wanted to make sure his opponent was safe, but he threw that with serious and ladies and gentlemen, Phil, I, I am nearly, I am nearly moved to tears, I have seen this never in our sport, Dennis Maher is telling the crowd not to cheer, he's concerned for his opponent's health, the good news is, Second time, he's back on his feet, under his own control, he's got an ice foot the snack, he realizes what happened, he's got a little bit of a grin on his face, he's like, yo, I've got caught, I got caught, but I want to one more time say that Denise Mager is a class human being and a great representative of the great nation of Belarus. Of Brave Nation, I have some unfortunate news. Our main event. Unfortunately, our main event between Lucas Martin Monero and Marcel Grabinski at the very last moment has been canceled. The fighters did not want, I'm not going to say what fighter caused it to be canceled. The fighter wanted to fight. He's been sick all day. And on recommendation of the medical staff, this fight has been canceled. This is Brave Combat Federation. We always listen to our medical professionals, no matter how much we don't want to. I apologize to everybody. I know I was looking forward to this main event like nothing else. I know you were too. But on the advice of medical professionals, the fight between Marcel Kaminsky and Lucas Martin has been Canceled. Having said that, the co-main event did have a storybook ending. We are here in Miss Belarus, and Miss Belarus native Dennis Meyer had an absolutely fantastic. Our land in Miss Belarus and the rest of the world watching. What an incredible co-main event we had. This led by your hometown hero, ends at 2 minutes and 54 seconds of the very first round. Your winner, by knockout, from Minsk, Belarus, Denis Bagan! All right, ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation. Unfortunately, Marcel Grabinski has suffered a metal condition backstage and the main event of the evening is canceled. I would like to thank Belarus, thank Minsk for all of your support. This has been an amazing night and we want to give a special thank you to our global partner Green Hill, our general partners, the National Olympic Committee of the Republic of Belarus, Minsk World, as well as our official partners, the Belarus Federation of Hand-to-Hand -hand Fight and MMA, 
the Clinic Merci and Opera Casino. Уважаемые дамы и господа, к сожалению, я вынужден uh, сказать то, что Марсель Грабинский не сможет принять участие из-за своего из-за из состояния здоровья. Uh, посему uh, вечер объявляется закрытым, и мы выражаем благодарность всем партнерам, всем официальным партнерам. Национальному Олимпийскому комитету Республики Беларусь, Минск Ворлд, также э, Белорусской Федерации рукопашного боя и смешанных единоборств, клинику Мерси и Опера Казина. Большое спасибо, уважаемые друзья. До новых встреч. Минск, Беларусь, it has been an absolute honor to be here. You all have been incredible. We look forward to seeing you within a year. We have our fighters coming on into the stage right now. Want to have Lucas Miniero share the microphone and give a few words to the crowd about the situation, the events, and what has taken place and how he feels about it. Lucas. Сейчас мы предоставим слово Лукасу Минейро, который, к сожалению, остался без своего оппонента. И он скажет о своих ощущениях по поводу отмены этого боя. Я acabei de receber essa notícia, faltando dois minutos para entrar aqui dentro do octógono. Eu estou pronto, aceitei lutar com Grabinski. Dois atletas russos correram de mim e eu estava pronto hoje. Espero que ele esteja bem, mas eu quero que ele retorne e lute comigo. Há cinco minutos de entrar aqui dentro, a minha luta foi cancelada. Eu estava pronto para lutar com qualquer um. Two minutes ago they canceled the fight. I was ready for Grabinski. I still ready. I want him. I don't want to fight anyone else. I want to wait for him. I hope that he's okay. But it's not fair. The people just say to me two minutes before my fight, so I'm very sad. But it's nothing to do right now. Ah, uh, к сожалению, бой был отменен, и мне буквально за две минуты до до начала нашего боя сказали о том, что Лукас Грабинский не сможет, Марс Грабинский не сможет выйти на этот бой. Я считаю, что это неправильно, и я готов драться как с Марселем Грабинским, так и с любым соперником в своей весовой категории. Дайте мне бой, и я покажу свои лучшие качества. Лукас, you have trained so hard for this fight. Focus, sharp, ready, dedicated. What do you have to say to your fans in Brazil that supported you this whole way? and share a little sentiments with them as well. Ты очень сильно готовился к этому бою, чтобы ты хотел сказать своим фанатам, которые преданно поддерживали тебя в течение всего этого времени и и надеялись на то, что увидят твой бой сегодня. Você treinou tanto para essa luta, o que você tem para dizer para seus fãs no Brasil? Estavam torcendo esperando por essa luta. Eu venho treinando há dois anos, esperando esse momento do meu retorno. Eu faço um investimento muito grande, olha a minha equipe que está aqui, cara. Eu não venho sozinho, eu venho com muita gente. Eu tenho muitos patrocinadores, investidores que acreditaram em mim para mim estar aqui para fazer isso acontecer. Eu não desejo mal nenhum para nenhum atleta, mas eu estava pronto. Fiquei sabendo, faltando dois minutos para mim entrar aqui dentro. Poderia ser com qualquer outro atleta, mas eu estava pronto para lutar. I was training hard two years. I spent a lot of money on this camp. Look to my team. We from Brazil, so it's not uh, cheap come there to here. So it's not fair. They told me this just two minutes ago. So it's truly not fair. But I'm, I hope that he's gonna be okay, and I'm ready. Я готов к любому вызову. К сожалению, да, этот кемп у меня выдался не один одним из самых дорогих. И мне я считаю, что это несправедливо по отношению ко мне. Но я считаю, что в ближайшее время мне дадут возможность исправить эту ситуацию. We'd like to personally thank the entire Capital de Luta team, the entire country of Brazil, that great nation for always supporting. And of course, we want to thank the former Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, the one and only Lucas Miniero Martins, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lucas. Eu quero agradecer direto do Brasil todos os meus patrocinadores que me ajudaram a estar aqui. Eu trabalho muito, todo mundo sabe disso. Eu quero agradecer a todos. Hoje, infelizmente, eu não pude trabalhar e mostrar para vocês o tanto que eu treinei. Mas eu quero agradecer a cada um que está comigo, toda a minha equipe, capital da luta, todos os meus atletas, todos os meus amigos, toda a minha família. Eu estava aqui pronto hoje. 
que vocês são minha maior motivação, toda a minha equipe que está aqui, todo mundo tirou o tempo, infelizmente aconteceu, eu desejo o melhor para o Grabinski, e a gente vai se encontrar no futuro próximo. I was I was ready here. I want to say thank you for my family, for my team, for my friends. I want to say thank you for all my sponsors here. Like I said, I hope Gravinsky is going to be okay, but I want to fight him and that's it. Я хочу поблагодарить всех тех, кто поддерживал меня в течение моего кемпа, все тех, кто обозначен здесь на моём постере, всех моих друзей, мою свою семью. И я действительно, как и ещё раз повторюсь, то что я надеюсь, что Лукас что Марсель Грабинский чувствует себя хорошо и в скором времени я смогу встретиться с ним в октагоне. All right, we'd like to thank the amazing country of Belarus. This has been an unbelievable time. We look forward to coming back next year and making this a relationship that lasts an eternity. Don't forget, stick around for an incredible light show coming up right now. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart, from Carlos Kramer, the rest of our announcing team, and our entire staff at Brave Combat Federation. We are honored and humbled to be here. Thank you. Я хочу поблагодарить от своего имени, от имени Brave Federation, Brave Combat Federation. Надеюсь, что наша встреча состоится еще в следующем году, еще в следующем году, еще в следующем году и так до вечности. Благодарю всех за тех, кто кто присутствовал здесь, всех, кто поддерживал бойцов. Благодарю бойцов, всех, кто был участником нашего сегодняшнего вечера. Всего хорошего от Карлоса Кремера и от всей команды Brave Combat Federation. And finally, a thank you to Rook Sport Management for your partnership in making this an incredible success. Enjoy the light show, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for your incredible hospitality. <laughs>